Hello, the fine people watching. It's your grandmaster slash supreme leader, the Don. I am here alongside Sleepy Joe and Barack to rank some sitcoms that we've seen. With my impeccable taste, I'm sure you will all agree with me on all of these. I really hope Big Bang Theory is an S tier. Oh my God, is this how we're going to start this, Joe? I say we just ignore most of his opinions on most, if not all, of the shows. Oh, hamburgers. Let's get this list started, Donnie. Do not tell me what to do, Barack. But yes, let's get this list started. I want to apologize to the audience because our idiot editor messed up the logos for the sitcoms. Don't worry, Donald. He said he would edit this video free of charge and would even mow your lawn later. Frail also said that he would smuggle in some stuff in prison for you. Wow, what a nice guy our editor is. Everyone should go subscribe to the channel for his hard work and dedication. What a great man. Has a work ethic of an illegal, truly inspiring. Anyways, up first, we got It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I think everyone here can easily agree that it's an easy S tier. On God, Donald, it is. It has been running for so long for a reason. All the characters are so lovably hateable that it's amazing. The dark humor the show has is the perfect amount of edge, and I just love the hell out of Charlie and Mac. I like Danny DeVito a lot in that show. He's pretty funny. Shut the fuck up, Joe. You like the Big Bang Theory? Don't go out giving valid opinions because it'll make me hate them. I do like Danny DeVito, though. Anyways, we're on to our next entry, and that is My Name is Earl. This shit was all right. I give it a C tier. I feel like for its time, it was pretty good, though. Yeah, but looking back on it, I can't put it on the same tier as a lot of these other shows, but I actually agree with you, Joey. It's a fun watch. The show was pretty mid, but I have to admit the crab man popped off. Up next, we got Malcolm in the middle. And as much as I want to put this show in S tier, I feel like A tier fits it the best. If I could give it an A plus, I would. It's a needle dick away from S tier. I really messed with Malcolm in the middle, and I think it's a classic. Personally, I'd have that in S tier. Well, personally, I don't give a shit. Up next, we have Seinfeld, and I really love Seinfeld, guys. I really like Kramer's stand-up comedy in real life that shit banged. Now, Donald, you know that isn't very nice. You should use your voice more cautiously. Yeah, and you should use your voice less. You have the voice best suited for sign language, you sleepy fuck. In all seriousness, I actually think Seinfeld is really good. It paved the way for other sitcoms in the future and still holds up to this date. I agree with that. Aside from the Kramer stand-up bit, it definitely is a classic and should be appreciated. Agreed, Barack. Up next, we got 30 Rock, and this shit is barely above mid, in my opinion. It is a B tier, but it has some enjoyable moments, unlike Parks and Rec, which I think is pretty good and very deserving of an A tier listing. Aubrey Plaza was so hot in this, and I liked fat Chris Pratt better than skinny Chris Pratt. I kind of feel him on that Chris Pratt comment, not going to lie. And Aubrey Plaza was extremely bust down in Parks and Rec. I can't even lie, I agree with both those things. The only thing that pissed me off about the show was Leslie Nope. Man, she was fucking annoying sometimes. I then also have The Office in A tier because it's another classic sitcom, but it would have been S tier if they just stopped when Michael Scott left. I didn't mind the seasons after his departure, but personally for me, peak office was with Michael Scott in it. Yeah, Michael leaving really brought down the show, but I still say it was enjoyable after that, but for me, that shit is an S tier. Like, it's too influential, in my opinion. Is it as influential as the Big Bang Theory? Joe, you smooth brain fuck. No one likes Big Bang Theory. I think The Office stays at A tier. And next, we got Brooklyn Nine-Nine going at A tier as well. I fucking love Andy Samberg. It's super enjoyable, and I don't think anyone can genuinely hate it. OK, that has to be a B tier entry. I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but no way it's an A tier. Agreed. It is not on the same level as The Office and Parks and Rec Donald. You're just trying to suck up to cop-related things now. I am innocent, so there's no reason for me to suck up to cops. I just like what they do. And I like Andy Samberg. I loved Lonely Island. Anyways, my opinions are always right. And next, I got Community easily going into S tier. Now, you're cooking, Donald. This show is amazing. It was streets ahead for its time and had people before they were way more famous. Catch my guy, Childish Gambino, there before he blew up and started rapping. It's an overall enjoyable and funny show. No shit, Barack. Thanks for just jumping in and interrupting me. I was about to say all that shit before you just decided to come in, but yes, it's a very feel-good show and is very squishy. What the hell does being very squishy mean? Sleepy Joe, you abhorrent old pruny fuck. Something being squishy means it's like squish, like that shit is adorable, and that's how I feel about community. Now, here's one that I feel like I have to put in A tier. If not, I'm going to get crucified and get constant cock and ball torture if I don't place it high. And that is Friends. 
I swear Friends is just an okay show, but like the fan base will eat my ass out if I don't put it high. Way to pander to the people, Donald. I think it's mighty mid. On God, Joey, but man, Jennifer Aniston alone probably makes this show that high. God, she is so fine. Listen, guys, I like it, but I am putting it in A tier for the people because unlike you Democratic commies, I actually work for the people. Now, up next, we got Modern Family, and it's a solid B tier for me. I like the illegal in the show. She is very divine, and the show is funny at times, too, I guess. Donald Sofia Vergara is not an illegal. Frankly, I don't even think she's Mexican. Look at this racist fuck assuming every illegal is Mexican, God Barack. People like you disgust me with your assumptions. You need to really reflect on what you just said. Moving on past that insanely insensitive remark by Barack, I have How I Met Your Mother in C tier, and I have Party Down going in A tier. This shit is a hidden gem, and they're making a new season, so you all want to hop on the Party Down train. One of my favorite bits of the show is the soup joke. It has Kevin Hart. There's a soup joke, and Kevin Hart is in it. Whoa, that sounds like a great time. I'll have to look up the clip. Oh, yeah, buddy. I'm sure you'll love it. Donnie, no. Please, everyone, do not look up the Party Down soup scene on Google. It has no, no words. Shut up, Joe, you fat sopping pussy. But yeah, Barack, don't look it up till the list is over and I am out of the call. Anyways, we got Joey's favorite, and that is Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. Yeah, this is a straight D tier, and I better not catch any of you bazinga-ass motherfuckers trying to vouch for this show. I am a certified Big Bang Theory hater, and I plan on keeping it that way. Donald, just admit you can't comprehend the elite humor Big Bang Theory has. It makes me feel so smart while watching. Joe, you probably love the show so much because it's your favorite nap time show. Anyways, we have That 70s Show up next, and it's another solid B tier. I don't really have much to say about it, but I really like it, especially those smoke circle segments where they're all fried out of their minds. Oh, I know a thing or two about being fried. Do you guys mean like fried food? I'm not catching what you guys are throwing down. Of course you don't, Joey God. Sometimes I just wish your mother would have swallowed you. Up next, we got The League, and once again, it's an okay show, but I'd say it belongs in C tier. Not a lot of people know of the show, but it has that one dude from the Creep movie, and it's funny sometimes. And now for our final entry, I have two and a half men going in C tier. It was pretty good till Ashton Kutcher came in, much like how my run in office was good until Joe came in and messed everything up. But you know what that show kind of reminds me of us three. How so, Donnie? Like you and me are the two men, Barack, then we got our little half man here in Joey. Real funny, Donald. I thought you were going to say it reminded you of us here because you're the only half man with a three inch warrior, Donald. I told you Stormy made that shit up. Bazinga. Hello, gentlemen and ladies. Continuing up on Trump week, me and the gang will be doing a smash or pass on some cartoon mothers that our fine editor has gotten for us. Before anyone says anything, fully expect a dad smash or pass list coming out tomorrow as well because we don't discriminate here. Well, frankly, I do, but they wouldn't let me do this one unless I made the other. Yeah, Donnie, we got to be inclusive of everyone from all different paths and walks of life. I pray that you take the last walk of your life today, Joey. Anyways, let's not waste any more time because clearly we have our very first smash here. And by smash, we all mean it would be someone we take out on a date and treat with respect and care for deeply. Yeah, I don't. But disregarding that, who doesn't like Miss Incredible? I'm not a big fan of her haircut, honestly. OK, Joe, what the hell, man? She has a good haircut. And actually, now that I think about it, doesn't your wife have similar shortish hair? I stand by my statement. Barack never compare his wife to Miss Incredible. She doesn't hold a candle to her. Donald, all women are queens. Let's just be nice about this all. Fine, since we want to go all woke and be all PC about this, let's just go ahead and move on to, to our next entry, which is Francine Smith from American Dad. Let me tell you guys, this is an American woman here, the model woman. She has the blonde hair, and all she's missing is the blue eyes to be perfect, but still a smash for me. Settle down there, Adolf. I also agree that I would take her on a nice date. But ultimately, I don't think me and her would have a good time seeing as though we have different personalities. Jesus, Barack, stop being woke. It's called smash or pass not date or not date. Hulk smash. See, even Sleepy Joe is getting the hang of it. We'll just move on to the next, and it's, oh my god, what the hell, frail? Why would you shove SpongeBob's mom into this? Smash. Joe, what the hell are you saying? How on earth can you say smash to a sea sponge? You disgusting cretin, bro. I'm just saying, didn't you guys go out diving when you were younger and grab some sponges and then go back home so that you could turn them into fleshlights? A flesh what, Joey? And of course, we didn't do that when we were younger. What the hell? Stop this now. This is a pass. Please move on to the next one. I can't listen to Joey go on about this. 
agreed, and oh man, we got ourselves Dr. Ann Possible, and let me tell you, she could possibly do anything to me. Definite smash right here, gentlemen. Seeing how she's a doctor, I can see myself exploring her personality more and discussing important scientific things to both increase my knowledge and my understanding of her. Only reason you talk about science with her is to find out how to make more potent drone strikes, Barack. I don't like her hair again. I like girls like Jenna Ortega. Stop being a creep, Joe. That's a real-life young person who is in her 20s, and you are an old rickety old bones-ass old man. Stop. At least with these fictitious characters, you don't have to feel bad about saying smash, but you're choosing to be weird right now, Joey. Anyways, up next we got, oh my God, the editor knew what the hell he was doing. He loves the Don because he knows the Don loves him some cushion for his pushing. 100% a smash for me. I would throat punch Dexter just to get a chance of smelling a park bench his mom sat at. Yeah, definitely a smash. What happened to your morals, Barack? Look at her. I had to. I don't like her red hair or her short hair. Yet again, another pass from Joe Dog. Wow, they're truly missing out on the best nap of their lifetime, I guess. Anyways, up next we got Linda Belcher. And man, I am going with a hard pass on this one, fellas. She is just the most exuberant person on this list so far. She is hilarious and will breathe life into any relationship. I absolutely adore Linda so much, I will definitely take her out to a nice dinner. Yet another pass from Joey the dog. Joe, why are you making all these nicknames for yourself? You know they only call you Sleepy Joe anyways. I wonder who we have next. And oh man, I am in quite the predicament. Now I'm not saying I am a furry, but I mean I am also saying that I'm not not a furry. This is definitely a smash. I will goo goo gaga for that kitty. Now Nicole Watterson is a strong independent mother who is the only working member of the family and still cooks and cleans for everyone. Just for that alone, I would say that I would love to take her to dinner and get to know her more, but she also knows karate. So I would feel safe and protected in her mommy arms. Oh shit, a cat, definite smash right here, fellas. Now we're speaking my language. You know, I can't judge you too hard, Joe, because I also said smash, but I'm in heat, so it's different. I'm excited for what's next, and oh my, we're getting ethnic in here. I like to roll around in some brown. Give me Trudy Proud all day, any day. I just love how disappointed she looks already. It's great. Pass for me, fellas. Of course. Joe says pass on an absolutely magnificent woman. Would most definitely take her out on a nice night out in town. If the town name starts with plow, then I am completely on board with you, Barack. And up next we got, oh my God, this is 100% with the force of a thousand sons of smash for me. I would go buck wild on her. Absolutely ape shit on Timmy's mom. Guys, why are we hyping up mid again? Joey, stop, you're better than this. She is a queen and she is amazing. I love her. Yeah, whatever. Wake me up when some real shit drops. You sleepy fuck, I should crucify you for these comments you're making. Let's just finish this list so we can go game. Lastly, we have, oh, what the hell, Frail? Why did you sneak in this disgusting ass minion? Ew, what the hell, editor? Omega Smash, I'd wear that minion like a glove. Jesus Christ. What is up, everyone? The Joe Dog is here giving you guys another tier list. As always, I'm joined by my buddies, Donald and Barack. Buddies is being a bit nice, but sure you can call me that Joe since I know you don't hang out with other people. You're only pretending to be mean. I know how you are, Donald. You're doing it for the viewers. But anyways, we are going to do a social media tier list today, and I have a decent lineup here, and I will be ranking each and every single one. To start this great list off, we have an S tier right off the bat, and that is YouTube. Who doesn't like this? It's basically better than cable at this point, and it's where I watch everything and anything. Like you all today are watching this on YouTube. And we also have YouTube shorts. Yeah, we know how much you love YouTube shorts, Joey. You're always blasting them in the freaking car when we pick you up. I can't help it. You guys always make me sit in the back and it gets boring back there. Joey, you are such a freaking iPad kid. I bet the only way you pay attention to things is if you have subway surfers playing in the background. Well, um, maybe, but that's aside from the point. Let's keep doing this tier list. And up next, we got another S tier, and that is Reddit. I freaking love Reddit. I am always up to no good on that app and I can't open it in public, but oh man, when I'm alone, it becomes my favorite app for like six minutes. What you are implying, Joe, is absolutely vile. Nah, I hard smell him on this. Reddit is for fiend activity and the Don fully endorses that type of stuff. I knew you would get me on that one, Donald. Up next, I can't even lie. It's another S tier and that is Twitter. When Reddit is down, you all already know that it's game over when I pull this up. It is basically raps whenever I stalk a girl's profile 
and I see a Twitter link. Again, this is so gross. I use Twitter for gaming news and sometimes sports. Why can't you do that instead? Barack, we all know you're lame. You don't have to keep reminding us. You keep preaching right now, Joey. On God, Donald, up next we got Discord, and I am placing this into A tier. Like, we use it a lot for gaming, but I don't have any kittens on here because my last Discord got banned. And for that, I am placing it only in A tier. I was so mad that I was banned because I had so many nefarious ass Discord servers on one profile. Jesus, Joe, you dirty, dirty dog. You are making me so proud right now. What can I say? The Joe dog never stops with his schemes. I'd be rubbing my hands like a fly whenever I'm up to no good. Speaking of no good, we got our first F tier in Google+. I don't think a damn soul ever used this, and I don't blame them. It was stupid as hell. The same cannot be said for Instagram. This will go straight to B for baddie because I only use Instagram as a baddie searching device. I will skulk and stalk my prey through this app. Joe, you need to fucking relax with your vocabulary. You are sounding like a real creep right now. All right, I'll relax a bit. Up next, we got WhatsApp, and to be honest, this is a solid B tier. I used it a lot whenever Hunter would go on his cocaine rampages in Colombia. I had to contact him through that app and nothing else. Dude, you keep forgetting to tell him to bring me some. I should add him on that app since all the illegals seem to love using it. Yeah, it's pretty popular, like how every girl I know has a Pinterest, but this app is not that good. I give it a solid C because at least it's better than Google Plus and our next entry, Tumblr. Man, I freaking hate Tumblr now. It used to be the bomb.com, but ever since they stopped people from posting a certain type of content. I've had to use Discord, Reddit, and Twitter exclusively. Joe, I think we need to have a serious talk with you about the amount of usage those apps get from you regarding that uh, content you seem to enjoy. I don't have an addiction and I can stop whenever I want, which is not now. Anyways, up next we got Facebook Messenger and Facebook. They both go in C tier for me because only old people use Facebook. Not me though. I am young and hip. Joey, you are neither young nor hip, and it's okay to admit you use Facebook. I've seen you on it before, so why even bother lying? Don't know what you're talking about, but let's move on to TikTok. I am giving this an A tier because I prefer YouTube shorts now. I have seen the light and will not be influenced by China. God, you have been speaking to Donald again, haven't you? There is nothing wrong with TikTok, and the Chinese won't steal your info, Joey. That's exactly what they want you to think, Joey. The only thing TikTok is good for is for finding even more baddies who are doing some nice dance challenges. You are so right, Donald. And for some reason, up next, we got Spotify. I don't know why that's here, but I like listening to music, so I guess this will go into A tier for me, but it's not really a social media platform unless I share my playlist with someone. And then we lastly move on to Snapchat. I freaking love this app and will place it into S tier because I use it every day to snap and text these girls I meet online. Joe, you may want to watch out. No grown woman is using Snapchat every day and snapping an old guy like you. Have you asked any of these girls their age? Nah, I'm sure they're fine. Well, actually, a lot of them do ask me for help in algebra. And a couple of others also ask me for help in anatomy. Holy shit, uh, I'll be back. I just got to delete some stuff. Jesus Christ, can you believe that, Donald? What an idiot that guy is. Uh, yeah, haha. Will you excuse me for one second, Barack? I also have to delete some stuff, but it is completely unrelated to anything we were just talking about. God help me. Hey gang, continuing our trend of ranking things, Barack, Joey, and I got told by our editor Frail to go ahead and rank the best tier list that we've made. It seems to me like this guy is running out of ideas, but you know what, I'm kind of excited to review our past work. On God, I cannot wait to see where we rank our tier lists on our tier lists. This is so meta. Joe, I'm surprised you know what that means. This will all be in the order we uploaded them, and feel free to check them out if you guys haven't seen the videos. Yes, anyways, let's get started with my amazing list, and first up we have our zombies list. I personally am ranking this one a C tier. It was our first video, and I'm pretty sure Frail edited that thing about as well as a kid with an extra chromosome would. Despite that, this video did decent, so I think it's deserving of a C tier. Yeah, this was a solid video with an easy thumbnail. We were all a bit nervous talking, too, because it was our first time on video. I wasn't nervous. I've been on camera for a lot of things you guys don't want to know about. Uh, what the hell, Joe? But yeah, a solid C tier for me. And the same goes with our Pokemon tier list. It was us dipping our toes in the water more and getting used to speaking. Yeah, no one cared about our Pokemon tier list. I bet they'd want to smash or pass Pokemon list, though. 
We're not doing that, Joey. We all know your obsession with Vaporian. God, you are so foul, Joe. Moving on, we have our first S tier, and that is the console one. Everyone and their mother watched this video and wanted to see me absolutely dog on the Wii U. I don't care if that console had good games. It had a freaking iPad that I had to use, and I refused to praise it. Yeah, one of our most divisive videos, and people were angry about the PSP and PS Vita placement. Not to mention we forgot to include the GameCube, which, by the way, guys, it's an A tier because the Wii is superior. It can play both GameCube and Wii games, so it has to be higher than the GameCube. I love my GameCube, but yeah, that video was a banger. On God, but up next we have our first D tier, and that was our Hunter Hunter Arc tier list. God, how did I know Joe's smooth brain ass was gonna give us the worst performing video on the channel? We should have just ignored him, Barack. That was a waste of our time making that shit. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Joe, you still have me a bit triggered that we had to make that video in the anime one. Biden-sama refuses to take this disrespect. You guys are just normies. Whatever you say, Joe, up next we got another S tier, and that is, in my opinion, our magnum opus, our tippity top, our mountain peak, and that is our chip tier list. I really enjoyed making that, and it seems like everyone else in the comments did too. Also letting everyone know that list is based off the chip alone and no external factors. So no, I will not be trying Frito scoops with a dip because that won't change the damn rating. Don't you remember we let Joe make that list and he didn't move original Sun Chips back down to D? Oh man, I was about to split a wig. Just absolutely go ape shit because he didn't do that. You all keep hating on the Joe dog, but I got a loyal army of Sun Chip fans behind me and they refuse to put them lower as well. I will twerk for original Sun Chips till the day I die. They are so appetizing. Yeah, whatever. You and your army of mouth breathers can go ahead and lick some windows while eating your Sun Chips. Anyways, we got our ramen flavors up next, and I want to put this at A tier. I believe it was a good video and a great follow-up to our chip tier list, but didn't hit the same high as our chip one, quite honestly. Yeah, I remember wanting to do this tier list, but you wouldn't let me, Donald. Yeah, I don't even like ramen that much. I just dislike you a whole lot more. I remember poking fun at Donald a decent bit in this video, but yeah, an A tier is quite appropriate for this video, I would say. Yeah, now that you mention that, maybe I should rank it lower. Hmm. Anyways, now we move to the water tier list, and I think this was a solid B. I thought people were gonna like it more, but then you had people saying, oh, all water tastes the same. No, it does not. If I give you my toilet water, will you confidently drink that and say, oh, how refreshing, instead of taking the ice mountain I have in the fridge? No, but actually water tastes different. The people who know are simply elite water drinkers, except those Dasani people. There are dozens of us Dasani drinkers, and we will band together one day. Yeah, just like how I'm sure you and all the dementia-ridden folk will take over the world one day. Next up, we got our anime tier list, and it's a C tier. It almost got a B tier for the thumbnail alone, but I know a lot of people weren't watching it. They weren't vibing with our weeb talk, which is fair. Biden-sama was very sad to see the people not appreciating his elite anime taste. Elite is a nice way of putting it, but yeah, other than the thumbnail, I think this is a C tier. Yeah, and up next, we got our serial tier list, and I think this one is pretty solid, too, but it banged more than a couple of others, so I can confidently put this in A tier. Like, we made a comeback with this one, and people wanted to know how elite Honey Nut Cheerios were. I would twerk for those Honey Nut Cheerios and notice how I made this one. Just saying that my tier list seemed to be some of the best on the channel. Whatever, Barack, it doesn't matter because views don't equate to quality. If that were true, I would have won the 2020 election instead of this rock chewer we got here. Only rocks I'd be chewing on is some diamond. What the hell does that even mean? Like, did that sound cool in your head or something? It didn't make any sense, Joey. Anyways, we got the condiments one. And I must say that this goes in S tier because of an elite joke I made towards Joey. Okay, come on, relax now, Donald. That is not an S tier, but it's an all right video, maybe closer to an A or a B tier, in my opinion. Yeah, the mustard slander was bad, and everyone in the comments knows it. Honey mustard is an S tier every day of the week. Whatever you sleepy fuck, it's my list, so I leave it at S. And now for our most recent video, we have the sitcom tier list, and I am a bit conflicted. It was a really good tier list, some say the best tier list, but it didn't bang so much, and we should have included more in the tier list, honestly. Plus, Frail fucked up in the editing and hope we didn't notice that lazy fuck. I give it a B tier. I mean, it worked. I didn't notice anything. Yeah, neither did I, to be honest, which is weird because I like catch on to everything. The only thing you catch are cases and L's Joey. Yeah, and the only thing you catch is jail sentences, you orange fuck. 
What is up, gang? We are back on the Spider-Man craze because we all just saw Across the Spider-Verse. And we decided to make our next tier list on all the Spider-Man movies we've ever seen in order of their release date. As always, I am joined by Donnie and Joey. Across the Spider-Verse was so good, everyone should watch it if you haven't already. Half of me didn't like Miguel O'Hara, but the other half I liked. I also enjoyed how he hated Miles and told him he didn't belong. Huh, I wonder why you of all people would like that, Donald. Anyways, let's go ahead and start this list, and I have the first Spider-Man going into C tier. It's a pretty mid-movie, but I still liked it and introduced us to Toby as Spider-Man. That's not a bad review for it, honestly. I'd maybe even bump it up to B tier because that shizzle is for nizzle. God never let Joey speak for himself. C seems one tier too low, but after hearing Joey say what he said, well, I'll hear you out on this list, Barack. I just can't get over how good Willem Dafoe was in the first Spider-Man movie. Nah, trust me and let me cook. My list feels very nice in my opinion. I do respect Dafoe as the Green Goblin, and he even stole the light from every other villain in No Way Home, but as of now, I feel like this is the right place for this movie. However, next I have Spider-Man 2 going into S tier. This movie was the best superhero movie of its time and basically held that title for a while. It definitely held the title as the best Spider-Man movie all the way till arguably either No Way Home or the newer animated Spider-Man movies came out. Big dubs right here, Barack. The OG Spider-Man carried the whole franchise till the newest movies. I don't want a damn soul in the comment section to try to say that Andrew Garfield had better movies or that Tom Holland had any better ones aside from, of course, No Way Home, but that movie is goaded for having all three Spider-Men. Doc Ock was a good-ass villain in this movie, and Spider-Man 2 will forever live on as one of the best. Yeah, but too bad MJ in this movie looks like Dookie. You know what, though, Joey? I actually have to agree with you here. I, for one, think that the amazing Spider-Man has the best female lead. Zendaya is, well, a bit too ethnic for me. Okay, wow. Cut that out right now. That is so inappropriate, and you know Joey loves Zendaya. Don't make him sad, Donald. Anyways, we got our next movie, which is Spider-Man 3. Now, this movie is good for memes, but for everything else, it is kind of bad. I don't blame the creators because they were forced to put Venom in the movie, but overall, this is a D-tier movie. Bully McGuire was a giga chat in this movie, and I like that part. But yeah, everything else was as bad as Joey's dementia-ridden nightmares. What are we talking about? Ooh, I didn't like Spider-Man 3 that much, but the amazing Spider-Man was pretty all right. Joey, don't go taking naps. But I do have to agree that The Amazing Spider-Man was pretty all right and goes in C tier. I definitely think the first movie is overhated, but I personally think it is very solid. Gwen Stacy definitely makes me pretty solid, all right? A solid three inches. Sleepy Joe, shut your ass up before I go over and cause another insurrection. Okay, enough, you two. I want to continue, and I unfortunately cannot say the same for the sequel because it is a pretty bad movie. Andrew Garfield tried his best to save it, but you just can't sometimes, and I have to put this into F tier. Yeah, this isn't surprising. Can we talk about Spider-Man Homecoming now? It has the perfect MJ to ever exist. Fine, I guess I was gonna go more in depth, but I guess I better finish this list before Joey takes another nap. So I like the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies and he has become my favorite iteration of Spider-Man. I personally think the first movie was good and an excellent entry to introducing Spider-Man into the Marvel Universe. I'm feeling a B tier for this movie as I can't really find too many flaws in this movie and it had to establish the new Peter set up a villain, integrate him in the universe, and it had a lot on its plate, but managed to be good. I was gonna rag on you for rating it that high, but you know what? I smell what you just said. It did have a lot on its plate, and I'm sure that if it wasn't forced to be in the Marvel Universe, it probably could have been made better. Yeah, but it also deserves to be that high because of Zendaya. She's a cool character, I guess. I'm glad you two agree. I then have our Miles Morales Spider-Man movie starting, and Into the Spider-Verse is our first A tier. I loved the animation, the music, the characters. Everything about this movie was just a chef's kiss. Ethnic Spider-Man was cool, but I liked the animation a whole lot too. Don't have to call him that. Could just say Miles or simply just Spider-Man. But anyway, returning back to Tom Holland's movies, I may have a bit of a hot take here because I am actually putting Far From Home into C tier. I just think it's one of those movies that initially you were like, whoa, this might be the best Spider-Man movie yet. But then the more you watch it, the more you just kind of are left unimpressed by the whole film. Like I get he's got to get over Tony Stark dying, 
but having the whole main villain be as menacing as they are simply because Peter ended up giving him access to all the weapons just left me unsatisfied. I will say that it was a pretty cool modernization of classic villains and having this all be a setup for No Way Home was great. But it just ended up making this movie feeling like it was purely for setup purposes only. Wow, word vomit here, Barack. You could have just said the movie was mid and nothing more. And me personally, I would have agreed. Yeah, dog, we did not need to hear all that. I hate you two sometimes. I'll make this next one short. I am placing No Way Home into S tier because it has all the Spider-Men. Okay, but now that is too short of a review. I seriously hate you. Fine, I love the movie and how it introduced all the various villains and heroes from previous movies and hit us all with a nostalgia blast while simultaneously setting up the biggest moments for Tom Holland's Peter Parker in ways the other Spider-Men had. But his was missing. It had some of the most hype moments. And at the end of the film, we get a Venom teaser and Peter goes back to being a nobody and has to do everything on his own, which I love. Now that's a review, Barack. You need to use your words more often than not. I thought you were good at speeches. Uh-huh, sure, Joey. God. Well, lastly, and this may be biased because we just saw the film, but I'm putting across the Spider-Verse into S tier as well. I don't want to delve too deep into the story since it is new during the making of this video, but it does everything into the Spider-Verse does, but in a bigger scale and with even animation and characters. I loved Miguel O'Hara so much in this film and Miles comes into his own even more, very similar to Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Big dubs in the chat for this tier list. Yeah, I loved grass-cutting Spider-Man as well. Well, at least half of him. I hate you so much. What's up, Michael? Hi. It is Biden-sama once again bringing you all the best tier list to ever exist. My anime tastes are top tier, in my opinion. They're a little sleepy, but I do have to admit that you wake up every now and then for a banger, Joey. Just quit it with that cringy weeb vocabulary. Yeah, Joey, you don't need to say it every time, but you can mix in a little, but either way, it's me making this list. Anyways, let's get this list started, everyone. First and foremost, I want to get this easy one out of the way, and I want to put Attack on Titan as an easy S tier. On God Barak, this shit is a generational anime, and it is a modern day classic in the making. I don't think anyone can say otherwise, because it is just that amazing, and I can't wait for the last season. I hate to agree with Joe Meister here, but I love the way it goes from post-apocalyptic survival to a political drama and so much more. This is indeed generational. Agreed, fellas. Next, I have Yu Yu Hakusho going at A tier because it's a solid old gen anime. Just enjoyable overall and the vibes are immaculate. I don't know, Barack. It's kind of old. Shut up, Joe. Look at yourself in the mirror before you mention old. Your breath probably reeks of old man. This is a classic and it deserves to be that high. For real, Donald, you tell him. Next, we have Black Clover. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, it's a good solid show, like most things on this list are. But with the stuff I'm gonna put at B tier, I just can't fit Black Clover in there. I think it's a solid C tier. Black Clover is good as hell, Barack. It's a good shonen show. See, notice how you didn't say great. It's a good show, but I'm with Barack on this. It is a solid C, but that isn't bad either. Cocksucker. Thanks, Joey. Now we have Bleach up next, and I am putting this in B tier. The art and characters are great. And with the new Revival anime, I feel like it belongs at B. It would have been a C tier before the Revival, but I agree with you, Barack. With all the filler this show had, I would have rather had spent my whole day watching Boku no Pico instead. Wait, what show is that? It sounds pretty cool. Is it like Boku no Hero? Joey, trust me, you don't want to know. And it is nothing like Boku no Hero. So aside from some freaky stuff from Donald, which we shall save for the hentai tier list. I got Blue Exorcist at C tier. Is anyone like a diehard Blue Exorcist fan? I ain't ever hear someone be like, oh my God, guys, you got to watch Blue Exorcist. I agree, but it's not bad. I think we have our second C tier, to be honest. Agreed. Ooh, and next we got Death Note. That shit is pretty good. I'm thinking A tier right off the bat. Nah, fuck that, man. Put that shit in dog shit tier. Did you see how dirty they did me in the manga? They made a fool out of me. I swear I was about to nuke the Japanese just for that shit. I think that's even more of a reason to put it high. But either way, this is an anime tier list. We're not gonna count the manga Donald. I bet you fuckers are only doing this because I'm suggesting it. Yeah, probably anyways. Up next, we got another S tier, and that is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Like, there is no debate on this one. We should all agree in unison that it's literally perfect. Continuing to spit Barack? Yeah, I know. Anyways, we got Fairy Tale at the butt cheeks tier because it is so lame. What do you mean? It's pretty solid and I enjoyed it. Nah, I agree with Barack here. What are you, a pussy or something, Joey? 
You would like the anime that's like, with the power of friendship, I'm gonna ask, pull all these power-ups, man, fuck that. For real, Donald, you are spitting. Anyways, we got yet another S tier, and that is Gintama. I've never seen it, is it good? Joe, you sleepy fuck, you're literally missing out on peak. This shit is so good, and if you ask any Gintama fan, they will tell you the same. On God, Joey, you need to stop watching those weird little sister animes and watch some good shit. Next, we have Haikyuu going at A tier because it's really good, but I kind of stopped watching at season three. I can't even lie, I did the same, but it is very good. I mean, you guys aren't missing out on much. It's just more good shit, to be honest, but I agree it doesn't deserve S tier. Nice. Glad we all agree. Next, we have Hunter Hunter at S tier because, once again, that shit is peak. I love the shit out of it. Don't get me wrong, but that ending was so ass. How is it S tier? Trump Sama Yubaka, it had a decent ending, despite the manga still going, and with all the delays and shit, they did their best. Joey, please don't do that. But yeah, sadly, I agree with him. It's so fucking peak, despite having a somewhat bad ending. Yeah, too bad. By the time it gets another anime adaptation, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> well, uh, Barack, what's next? Right. Yes, totally. We got Dragon Ball Z at A tier, because this shit made modern day shonen and was the formula for everything else. It had some flaws, but it must be respected in my opinion. Totally agree here. I love the shit out of Dragon Ball. You know, Joe, you remind me of Master Roshi. Because of how skilled he is despite his age? No, it's because of how he's an old disgusting pervert. Okay, guys, enough. Next, we also have Dragon Ball Super. And I hope you guys don't kill me for this, but I think Super is, well, Super Mid. I am placing it in C tier. What the fuck is wrong with you, Barack? The Jiren fight was amazing and it's just good in general. Yeah, but like, man, I love the movies, but why the hell did the anime recap two of them? It was a huge waste of time. It just covered two movies in dog shit animation quality. And just for that, I can't have it too high. Plus, it doesn't capture the OG Dragon Ball feel, to be honest. Yeah, I missed it when going Super Saiyan actually meant something. Now the power levels are all messed up. You guys are insane for this. I can't believe it. You know it's not good if Sleepy Joe agrees. I kind of think the same, but that's my opinion. It's okay, though, because I'm redeeming myself with these next two. I have Hajime no Ippo at A tier, because it is literally the best boxing anime out there. The fights are so hype. Then I have Jojo at S tier, because the power structure, characters, story, and music is just peak all around. I just can't imagine hating Jojo or not thinking it's elite. I mean, I can see someone arguing for putting Jojo at A tier, but I don't hate the S tier placement. Yeah, I think it's a little excessive, but you put Ippo high, so I can't hate you, Drone Striker. Thanks, guys. Next up, I have Ruruni Kenshin as our second B tier. It's a solid classic. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, I bet you and the author have so much in common, Joey. Both of you seem so alike. Oh, geez, thanks, Donald. I like to think I'm pretty creative. Joe, that is not the compliment you think it is. Anyways, up next, I got Kuroko Basketball at B tier as well, because it's a really fun sports anime. Like, quite frankly, it's fucking hilarious seeing dudes camp the paint and say shit like, step into my domain. But Haikyuu has it beat in realism and intense moments, to be honest. B isn't bad, Barack, but I feel as though my brothers would disagree with that. And who exactly are your brothers, Donald? You know, my brothers from another mother. What do you mean by that exactly? Whoa, look, we got my hero next. That's Joey's favorite. On Baby, I like it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, though. Thank God, because it's an honest B-tier Joey. It's nothing special, but it's still good. The same can't be said for Baruto because I have that in shit tier. That's insane. Ain't no way it's that bad or worse than Fairy Tale. Nah, I agree with Barack. It was unneeded as fuck. They're nerfing Naruto just to make Baruto better, and they killed off Kuruma. Dude, what the fuck? Spoilers, Joey Jesus fuck. Yeah, Joey not cool, but it's not like I was going to watch that garbage anyways. Donald, it is bad. You just have to admit it. You're in denial. Don't worry, though. I'll give it some company by also putting seven deadly sins in shit tier as well. You've got to be shitting me. Oh, but I'm not Donald. Seven deadly frames and Naruto's son will stay in shit tier. Thankfully, we have a great palate cleanser with Noragami, and I am putting that straight in A tier. It's pretty good. You guys are going to kill me for this, though. I am placing OG Naruto in C tier and Midruto Shippuden in B tier. I should shoot you dead right where you stand. You have to be trolling right now. Donald, he's just butthurt. I agree with the OG Naruto take, like it's a super high C borderline B tier, but Shippuden should be A tier. What is he butthurt about? He's about to make me pop a neck vein. He's upset because when he was watching The Great Ninja War when it was airing every week, he got to the hype Madara and Guy fight, but got interrupted by filler and has had a hate boner for the series ever since. Are you kidding me, Barack? This is why you don't watch weekly and wait for episodes to pile up. 
No, that's not a valid excuse. Fuck Midruto and I am leaving that shit there. I am not listening to anything else. I am moving on to Peak Peace and that shit is an easy ass S tier. Come on, Barack, no way One Piece is an S, but Shippuden is a B. Oh, but it is. Better characters, better world building, more creative powers. Need I go on? It's staying an S and you can fight me about it, Donald. Yeah, Donald, One Piece is peak as fuck. Listen, I know it is, but I just don't want Naruto to be disrespected. How's this for disrespect? I'm putting One Punch Man above it. He is trolling. Yeah, how about you deal with that shit anyways? We have Katekyo Hitman reborn at B tier alongside Soul Eater. Both are extremely solid as fuck. Okay, how do you have those two alongside Shippuden? You know what you're doing is wrong, Barack. Barack, I'm tired of hearing him bitch. Please just change it. He's kind of right too. So ending everything off, I have promised Neverland at C tier. Pretty bad second season, but great first season. Barack, please, let me give one last argument. Fine, go ahead and tell me why it should be at an A tier. Okay, so you know Hitman isn't as good as Naruto, and you can't even lie, you were the number one person hyping up the pain arc. You can't argue with me that the Naruto versus Sasuke fight at the end alone should put it at A tier. It should be that high for legacy reasons as well. Fuck Donald, I hate agreeing with you, but fine. I'll move Shippuden up to A tier, but One Punch Man has to go down to B tier. Listen, Barack, was any of this so hard? I understand you were upset, but we are past that now. I know you're just being a little Sundaray Baraki poo. I know, Donnie Bear. I just can't help but hold a grudge, you know. Thank you for calming me down and being so supportive and helping me see the light. You know I will always be there for you, Barack. Likewise, Donnie Poo. Nandis Kai, where the hell did this fruity fucking shit come from? Shut, Shut the, the fuck, fuck up, up Joe. Joe. What is up, gang of Lang? We are back with another tier list, but this time we are going to be ranking Cartoon Network shows. Oh boy, I'm so excited to rank these. Looking at this list, we got a decent chunk of shows too. Yeah, I'm actually pretty excited about this too. Enough blabbering, you two. Let's get this list started. And up first, we got Adventure Time. This shit is a classic, and I am moving this into S tier without a doubt in my mind. Has to be S tier after making Princess Bubblegum and Marceline into a couple. That shit is hot. On God, Joe, and it was a pretty great show, even though I never finished it. But up next, we have Uncle Grandpa, and this show was specifically designed for kids who got on the short bus, so this has to go into D tier. Incredibly rude comment, but I can't even lie. If anyone genuinely enjoyed Uncle Grandpa, then like, I hope you were fried out of your mind or on some sort of drugs. Oh, don't worry, Barry. Me and Hunter would do some lines of coke while watching this, kind of banged. That actually sounds like a blast, holy crap. Too bad we don't have anything here with us, but at least we got another S tier in Ben 10. The show was a banger, and the sequel to it was also great. Same can almost be said about the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy as it was great in its own right, but I have it a notch below the others and have it going into A tier. I feel like I need to rewatch that show to give it a proper opinion, but I remember that show absolutely slapping. You know, I agree with that because I remember it being amazing, but I don't know if it's worthy of S tier. Same kind of goes with Chowder. Like, I remember liking these shows a lot. Obviously, I prefer the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy more, but I feel like they're both good A-tier shows. Yeah, I think we all need to rewatch those shows because I swear Chowder was funny as hell. I might need to be on a little something before I start my watch if you all catch my drift. I actually, for once in my life, am actually catching your drift for once, Sleepy Joe. Now let's move on to Clarence. This is like a new generation show, I feel like, so I can't really comment on it. Yeah, I never watched this, if I'm being honest. Don't worry, guys. I'm so hip with the times that I've seen this in most of the new shows. Clarence is all right, to be honest. I'd probably give it a C in all honesty. I would, however, do anything for the moms in that show. Joe, you absolute dog. I'll put it at C for you, but I've seen We Bear Bears, and I kind of liked it. It seemed fun and lighthearted, so I think B is a solid placement for it. But now we are coming up on our generation of stuff, guys. We got cow and chicken, and maybe it was because we were younger, but I thought this shit was comedy gold. Looking back, it's probably a B tier at best, but I thought this shit was amazing back then. Then we got Dexter's Laboratory, though, and Dexter's mom alone gets a high rating, but the show itself was good as hell, too. I give it an A rating. Solid freaking selections, Donald, but I personally would have cow and chicken, like, at C tier. It was kind of mid and not really anything great, even when I was younger. I like the devil guy with those big clappers. He had booty cheeks made of gold. Okay, and with that, I am done. Let's go ahead and move on to three of my personal favorites. I have Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Flapjack, and the amazing world of Gumball all going into S tier. 
I love the classic that is Ed, Ed, and Eddie, because those three goblins were always scheming to get money, and I hard related to that shit. Flapjack is probably one of the best shows to watch under the influence of any type of drug because of those scary, funny moments. Definitely underrated. And as for Gumball, I think we all know that shit is banging. No explanation is really needed for that. I think Flapjack is a bit too high, but I'd agree with the other two shows. L take for the Flapjack comment, but my opinions are amazing. What can I say? I am the great Don. Up next, we got Johnny Bravo. This shit is all right. I like it enough to merit a B tier. Then we got Codename Kids Next Door, and I really like this show. I'm giving it a solid A tier ranking because I feel like for its time, it was a good show. Like they had lore when needed and just had funny moments in general. Then after we got Camp Laszlo and I have that going into C tier, I don't remember it being anything special, but maybe it needs a rewatch. But more importantly, guys, what the hell is OK KO? I have zero clue what this is about, nor have I ever seen an episode of this, to be honest. Joe, you said you were hip and cool. What ranking does this get? I'm going to have to keep it real with you guys. Um, I only watched Clarence because some Rule 34 stuff with his mom came up. I have no clue what that show is, so we have to place it in the question mark tier. I do, however, know that Powerpuff Girls is mid, though. I agree on the Powerpuff take, but way to be useless as hell, Joe. I'll place Powerpuff Girls into C tier and then proceed to gas the hell up out of these next two shows. I have regular show easily going into S tier. I don't even think this needs to be explained either. The show is funny as hell and the humor was generational. I then have Samurai Jack going into A tier because like, it's not really Cartoon Network and the sequel on Adult Swim was better in my opinion, but still super amazing. I think Samurai Jack should be higher. It was a good ass show even before they brought it back, but I guess it's fine. I just hope we're all on board on the notion that Steven Universe is overrated. On God Barack, it started off strong, don't get me wrong, but that shit is too much singing and fusion. Felt like I was watching motherfucking Dragon Ball Z with all the fusions. I give it a solid B. Same can't be said for Teen Titans Go. This shit made a mockery of the original Teen Titans, but it had some really funny ass moments, like the show sucked, but if you get certain clips, it kind of banged. For that, I have to put it into C tier, but as for the OG Teen Titans, we all know where that shit is going and we have to place it into S tier. That's a given, especially with how breedable they made Starfire and her sister. Yeah, what the hell is wrong with you, Joey? Nah, let that motherfucker spit because he is onto something. Anyways, we got our last entry, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Now, I really enjoy this show and I thought it was great. I don't think it's on the same tier as the S tier shows, but I will give it a solid A tier. Why the hell do you have so many shows in A and S tier, bro? I feel like we've been too wishy-washy on these lists. I feel like Foster's was probably like a B tier at best. I bet the only reason you don't like Foster's Home and have it at B tier is because you were always trying to imagine yourself with some bitches and always had none. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and this time we are going to be making a sports tier list. Now, me being the physical specimen that I am, I decided that it would be best if I made the tier list because I, quite frankly, am the man with the most testosterone here. Nah, man, I've seen that picture of you playing tennis, and the only thing that you lead in is the amount of sheer bunda that you have in your behind. My dump truck is made of 100% American genetics, so I take that compliment in stride. I don't know if that's really a compliment, Donald. You don't get it because you don't hit glutes like I do. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, I got tennis going into A tier, super solid sport. And I actually enjoy catching the games when they have events like Wimbledon going on, but not enough to constantly care about it. Still, though, it's pretty good. That's a solid assessment. I enjoy watching it from time to time, and it has been enjoyable every time. On God, Joe, up next we got Black Skatball, uh, I mean basketball. Now what the hell did you mean by Black Skatball, Donald? I will cancel your obese ass. Simple slip of the tongue, Barry. Jesus, but yeah, we got that sport going into S tier. I love seeing dunks and stuff, and it's pretty exciting to keep up with the teams and watch games. Then I have golf going into C tier. It's a sport I love to play, but goddamn, I get bored watching golf sometimes. Like, I just cannot be there for too long or else I'll snooze. On God, um, they need to have subway surfers playing underneath or something. That might fix it, but who knows. Up next, we got table tennis or ping pong. I like it, but I'm never going to watch it, so I say it goes into C tier. Fun to play, 
but I am not going to take your ass seriously if you're a ping pong table athlete. If you're an American football player, though, I mean, you're the pinnacle of athleticism, and I love this American ass sport, which is going straight into S tier. Hoorah! But as for this next sport, I fucking love this shit. I actually prefer watching females play volleyball 10 times out of 10 over their male counterparts. I wonder why you of all people would prefer watching women's volleyball versus men's. Don't count me out either. I freaking love women's volleyball and will watch it any day of the week. Joe, you beautiful son of a bitch. I feel so confident placing this into S tier now. Up next, we got swimming. And I mean, this is cool during the Olympics. Like we got to see Michael Phelps dominate the world. So like, rah, America. But aside from that, it's all right. I think I'll place it into B tier and then place this next stinker in D tier. I freaking hate cycling. Like you got me messed if you think I am going to sit there and watch people ride bikes for long periods of times. I mean, it takes a lot of power, strength, and conditioning to be a cyclist. But yeah, that shit is pretty boring, so I actually agree with this take. Thanks, Barry. Now we got another A tier coming up, and that is boxing. Who doesn't like to watch people punch and hurt each other? I feel like this sport is also making a bit of a resurgence, too, because we got all these YouTubers and celebrities fighting, and even though they're not as well-trained, it still slaps because I love seeing them beat the ever-living hell out of each other. Then after that, we got badminton, and it's like a weird tennis. If there are baddies playing, I'll watch some badminton, but other than that, it is pretty mid. I give it a solid C in all honesty, but more importantly, can someone tell me what the hell Aussie rules are? No freaking clue, to be honest. Yeah, I have no clue what that is either. Should we Google it so we can give a proper opinion? Nah, that shit sounds non-American. I mean, it has Aussie in the name, so I will not allow the Australians to get their own sport. This will go into F tier, and we will now move on to skiing. It's pretty fun, but I also get really tired and cold in the snow. So, like, I don't want to place it too high. I'm thinking of it this way. I'd rather go swimming than skiing, so I think a C tier placement is due. That's a bit crazy, man. Do you know how crazy fun skiing can be? Yeah, if your ass is vouching for it, then I know I did the right thing. Up next, we got horse racing, and that's an F tier as well. What person genuinely enjoys horse racing? Like, unless you're gambling, I just don't know. But I do know people enjoy rugby. And it's kind of like football without pads, so despite not being as cool as football, I'll still give it the respect it deserves and give it a solid B tier. Yeah, sometimes I think rugby can be more dangerous than football, so in theory, that probably makes it more entertaining. But I actually never care enough to catch a game of rugby. That makes sense. I can't even front. Up next, we got stinky, stinky cricket, and that will immediately go into D tier because who the hell likes cricket? Up next, we then got soccer, and I have that going into a solid S tier because the World Cup slaps, and it has opened my eyes to how good soccer can be sometimes. Like, I enjoy watching it from time to time. Soccer is pretty dope, but I prefer baseball if we're being honest. Yeah, I don't know about that, Joe. I like baseball, but shit, man, it can get boring at times. I actually have that going into B tier. Like, it's probably a lot more fun playing than watching, but I'll watch when the World Series is on. Then we got ice hockey and field hockey. I got ice hockey going into S tier, and field hockey is like the shitty booty version of it, which I have going into D tier. I'm a bit upset about the baseball placement, but at least you got the hockey one right. I get all of these right, Joe. Don't ever try to correct me or say that I do not place them in the right order. Anyways, we're on to our final entries, and I have archery going into F tier. This is like shooting, but way more boring. Like, who the hell wants to watch some person with a bow and arrow aim it at a target when you could instead watch someone with a gun do the same thing, but in a better and cooler manner? That's why I have shooting in B tier. I love going to the range and just unloading all my frustrations in there. Yeah, totally, man. But I usually do that in schools. Huh? You what now? What is up, everyone? Your presidential trio is back at it again. And this time, we are proud to present an electronics tier list. Now, this won't include all electronics like a fridge, because then Donald would beg us to put that into S tier. But maybe we'd do a bigger version of this list as a technology tier list later on. Okay, but who the hell wouldn't put fridges into S tier? Like, you got me fucked up, man. That literally keeps our food cold and is a very valuable thing to our society. Like, think to yourself for a moment what we would do without fridges. Uh, we'd use coolers or ice boxes. Not that different. How is that not different? We need to constantly buy ice, and then that would get annoying to drain. What you just said is like saying, oh, we don't need this stove. We can just make a fire real quick to cook all of our food. Ooh, 
He definitely got you there, Joe, but enough bickering because I think most people would agree with Donald because it was kind of out of pocket of you, Joe, to assume a fridge would not go in S tier. Jesus, fine, uh, it's my bet. Good thing there's no fridge on this tier list, but anyways, up first we got the TV, and man, I love TVs, and I think they immediately belong in S tier. Like, think about it. We watch our shows on there, we also play games on there, and now with smart TVs, they've only gotten better since their invention, and I think they belong high up there. A little stuttery starting off, but valid as hell. They are pretty important for entertainment, and to be fair, you do need a TV if you plan on watching movies or shows unless you watch them on your phone or computer. Yeah, but the screen size isn't the same, and it just doesn't feel right if you're watching a 4K movie or show on a teeny tiny screen. The same would go for playing video games, because if you have some game running at 4K, would you really want to have that being streamed to your phone rather than on your big ass TV? I'll answer that for you, and it's no. And speaking of video games, our next entry is video game consoles, which I coincidentally also have going into S tier. I know it has a PlayStation 5 logo on it, but I'm including every single console out there. These are possibly one of the best electronic inventions in the whole entertainment industry. Like, I don't think people realize how much money video games make or how they're bigger than the film industry. Everyone loves playing video games and it is becoming the new normal. So I fully believe it deserves the S tier ranking. I'm surprised you said all of that without stuttering Sleepy Joe, but you made a valid point on video games. They are booming and are more popular than other things in the entertainment industry. I mean, we got eSports coming with them too, and it's just something that'll only continue to get bigger and bigger. On God, Donald, up next we got a bit of a stinker. I got speakers, and let's be real, who uses speakers? Like, unless it's in a public place or like an event or even surround sound for your TV, who the hell is using them? Like, I mean, portable speakers, too. Like, I don't see much use in them when we have everyone in the world using AirPods or headphones. Like, even when we game or watch something, I use headphones most of the time. So for that, I think I'll place them into C tier. Okay, but wouldn't car speakers or TV speakers count for this? Like, you're really going to use headphones in the car, Joey? That's a trick question because I'm not allowed to drive anymore. Ever since I fell asleep on the wheel, an accidentally vehicular man slaughtered this group of kids waiting for their bus one morning. What the hell? Why have we not heard of this yet? Oh, it's the CIA. I had the same thing happen to me down in Oklahoma. I was too busy trying to eat my bowl of mac and cheese, and I was driving with my knees, and then boom. I look up, and I got toddlers in my front end of my hood. Thank God for the CIA, though, and thankfully they told me it happens to everyone. No, that does not happen to everyone. Jesus Christ, this has gotten so morbid. Joe, please just continue with the list. Uh, don't know why you're making this into a big deal, but sure. Up next, we got laptops, and they will be placed into B tier. They're kind of being made useless by smartphones. Like before, it would be like, damn, I got to write an essay, but I'm going to be traveling. I guess I got to bring my laptop. Now I can just write up a whole paper and pass a law from my phone while I'm taking a huge diarrhea dump in my house. And because of what I mentioned earlier, I guess I may as well rank smartphones right now, and I think we all know this, but I am placing them into S tier, like there's no argument here. We all can't live without our phones. You may be watching this video right now on your phone as we speak. That being said, they serve a purpose in calling other people, but not only that, you can entertain yourself by watching a movie, show, or playing a video game, and if you need to get work done, you can write papers, upload documents, watch some videos on your favorite website. My favorite website with videos is one that starts with an X. Can you guess the name, Joe? Ooh, I know this one. I know you're an X videos type of guy, Donald. Well, that or Xamster. Get your mind out of the gutter. I meant X as in the website formerly known as Twitter. Jesus Christ, Joe. Yeah, you can't be saying those things, Joe. What the hell? It was a damn setup. It's okay. Let's just move past that and go to our next entry, which is the desktop we have on here. I am giving this an S tier. Now you may be like, oh my God, this virgin is putting his precious gaming PC in S tier. And first of all, I am no virgin. Second of all, I just like desktops. You can do everything a console can and you can work on your PC, which you can't do on console. So like checkmate. Okay, Joe, I agree with this, but you could have sold this better. Like there were so many things you could have said, but you just stuttered and faltered your way to the finish line. Can you blame him, Barack? It's getting close to his bedtime. Haha, <laughs> very funny. It's only 7.30 and we all know I sleep around 8.30 and 9 p.m. So I still have a bit of juice left to finish this list. 
Up next, we got a picture of a Steam Deck, but I meant it to be handheld consoles, so like a PSP, 3DS, Game Boy, Nintendo Switch. Basically anything portable and meant for pure gaming. I have that going into A tier, like I would rather have these than a gaming laptop because who the hell wants to game on a laptop that will overheat or have a fan as loud as the towers collapsing during 9-11? Jesus, Joe, too soon. That day is literally around the corner. Have some goddamn respect. Was that in poor taste just now? Beyond poor taste, Joe. What the hell goes on in your head sometimes? I just thought it would be funny because laptop fans get loud. I should have used my school shooting joke instead. No, you should have not used either. Jesus, fine. You guys are bumming me out. Let's just finish this list so I can nap before I sleep. Up next, we got a Wi-Fi router, and this kind of has to go in S tier. I like the internet as much as everyone else, and I think without it, all of these technologies would be terrible. Like no Wi-Fi for streaming movies, no Wi-Fi for playing video games, and no Wi-Fi for disproving whether or not 9-11 was an inside job. Not this shit again. Now hold on, he may be onto something. Jesus Christ. What is up, gang? We are back with another video, and this time around we are doing a streaming services tier list. So go ahead and get ready to cancel all the trash ones we are about to mention. Yeah, I'm noticing we're missing a few streaming services like where the heck is the hub and X Hamster. No way am I ever going to put those two in this list. Now hold on, Barack. Let's hear Joey out on this one because I think it's a valid question. Like for me, I want to know where Brazzers would rank on this list. And you two are officially done from commenting further on this. Let's start this tier list, and up first, we got Apple TV. And I think it is fair to say that this is fairly mid and have it in C tier. I don't know anything on their streaming service aside from Ted Lasso, which by the way, absolutely bangs. I am a huge Ted Lasso guy and it's a very feel good show. Feel good show, huh? Does it feel good to watch Ted Lasso go through his divorce and barely see his kid because he's halfway across the world? Is that the type of stuff that you enjoy, Barack? Jesus, man, it's a good show, and that is just a part of the plot. Anyways, up next we got CBS All Access, which is also more known as Paramount Plus to everyone. I also have this going into C tier alongside Apple TV. The reason for this is because this is basically just my South Park service. I don't see anyone else actually using this thing, unless God forbid you're like Joey over here who constantly watches young Sheldon for whatever reason instead of South Park. Listen, man, I hear all the young Sheldon hate, but riddle me this. Have you guys ever tried watching it? Joe, no one in their right mind should be watching young Sheldon out of their own free will. Like gun to my head, well shit, I guess I'll watch it, but otherwise, I will choose to watch any other show in existence. Yeah, you're missing out on some peak. Young Sheldon will forever remain the best show to have in the background playing while I'm doing almost anything else. You two can't understand the value in that because I am much, much more busier than you two because of all my presidential duties. Joe, the other day you showed me your screen time on your phone and I saw you had over eight hours on TikTok. What could possibly be keeping you so busy that you need a background show to be playing? Those eight hours were Chinese surveillance in order to make sure the future of America isn't being tainted and I had to make sure there weren't any subliminal messages throughout it. Safe to say the big bundas I saw on my For You page were not of national security concern, so you're welcome for keeping all of America safe. Wow, we are so grateful anyways. Up next we got Disney Plus, and this rating might make all you Marvel goblinoids mad, but I am putting this in A tier. Like I am not trying to watch every single Marvel show in existence. They make shows for just about anyone these days. And I also don't want to watch every Disney movie all over again. I'm sorry to the 7% of our female audience and all the Disney boys, but I am not going to watch Lion King for the fifth time. Whoa, 7% of our audience identify as women? How sexist of you, Barack, to assume they would be watching Disney movies? Don't worry, ladies, I'm gonna have to turn on the Joe charm soon to put Barack in his place. You emanate as much charm as an obese slug, Joey. But you know what that is valid to say. And I apologize to any ladies watching this. Anyways, up next we got Hulu, and what can I say except for that, I'm a sucker for Hulu. They have almost everything, and it's cheaper than a lot of streaming services, and I personally don't mind the ads. But if you're not a fan, then you can upgrade to ad-free. Hulu also added live sports like, it is simply elite, and I will be placing this into S tier. I am a sucker for Hulu, so I will allow this placement, but looking at this tier list, I feel like there is like two more S tiers waiting for us on this list. You better not mess this up, Barry. Can you relax, man? I know what I'm doing. 
I feel like I have the best tier list, but whatever. And up next, we got Fubo. I don't know what the hell that is, and I don't even feel like looking it up. It's mainly local channels and sports stuff. Really, it's kind of useless since we got other streaming services that already have live sports and also offer better stuff with it as well. Yeah, I'm feeling a D tier on this one. It just seems lousy. Up next, we got HBO Max, or now known as just Max. I also am a huge fan of Max. I like their shows and how they have access to a lot of Cartoon Network and Adult Swim shows. Not to mention they have movies and now they're adding some live sports. Like this is just a good ass streaming service and I would heavily recommend people get this one and we'll place this into S tier. You know what show is a banger? Which one, Joe? 10 year old Tom and Smiling Friends are both indeed certified double platinum by the Joe Dog as certified bangers. Of course, Joe would like a show about some 10 year old named Tom. You like sniffing him on the screen or something? Now, wait a minute. I unfortunately have to admit that Joe is cooking right now. 10 year old Tom is funny as hell and Smiling Friends is also bona fide as well. If you haven't seen it, I would heavily recommend them both. But yeah, anyways, up next we got Netflix. Home of all the original shows in all of existence. Too bad a lot of them are terrible, like look at Riverdale and that god-awful show. I will say though that the One Piece live action was a bop and kudos on them for that. But they've made so many stinkers, but they get legacy points from me for being one of the OG streaming services. I still think that they charge too much right now but I will give them a solid A tier for legacy reasons and the series they've created. I know they didn't make Breaking Bad, but I binged it all on there and I personally really like Stranger Things. Don't get Joe started on Stranger Things because he twerks for Millie Bobby Brown. You, isn't she like a child? <laughs> Not anymore. Joey won the lottery that day. That is so vile, man. Let's just move past that and talk about Peacock. I don't really like Peacock unless I'm watching The Office. Still though, I will put it above Apple TV and CBS at B tier because I really do like The Office and they also have Modern Family and New Girl, so like, there's at least that. I do really like The Office. It sucks that they have to put it behind that because if they offered it almost anywhere else, I would not have a Peacock subscription. True that, man, but that's how they get you. Like Peacock without The Office would genuinely be borderline D tier. Maybe a C tier. Anyways, up next we got Prime Video and this was a tough one for me. Most people have Amazon Prime, so I'd naturally put this high up and even considered an S tier for this because everyone probably has it either way. But that's not how I wanted to do the list. I wanted to do it purely as a platform and on its own. It is pretty good and it's arguable that it can belong in S tier. But me personally, I have it going into A tier. I love the boys and Invincible, and I like the renting and buying options for shows and movies on there, but I feel like they don't have enough to get them over the hump and place themselves into S tier. How did it even get placed that high? It literally only has a couple of good originals and most things on there you have to buy. Sleepy Joe, I know you love to constantly be sleeping, but do not disrespect the originals they have. I freaking love the boys and I don't even know if I will live long enough for Invincible season two. Yeah, I have to agree with Donald, Joe. You're massively sleeping on it, if you think that's true. Uh, anyways, up next, we got Quibi, and this is an automatic D tier. I don't even think they're in service anymore because it was that big of a failure. Then after that, we got Sling, and I'll give Sling a C tier. It's basically like the shitty booty version of our next entry because it offers live TV and a bunch of channels, but it's pretty bad in comparison to the top dog up next. You sure are hyping up YouTube TV? You sure you're not only doing that because they write our check? No, like YouTube TV is actually elite. I would be praising it even if they weren't writing our checks. But anyways, let me explain why I love it so much. It has live channels and sports and I can record stuff or pull up shows I missed at any time. I can also rent movies and it's basically cable, but even better. I like being able to just pull up any show or movie that was airing that I may have missed. Or better yet, Watch something that is about to air, like you got me messed up if you think I am gonna miss the new premiere of season seven of Rick and Morty. Seriously, everyone, if you want something similar to cable, then I would heavily recommend YouTube TV, which I have going into S tier. This definitely feels like you're sucking off the service, man. Is it really much more different than other services on here? Like I'm pretty sure Rick and Morty is on Max literally the next day after so is all this hoopla really necessary for YouTube TV? Yeah, but I can watch Rick and Morty as it's premiering. Maybe I just miss Cable Man. 
Is there something wrong with wanting things like how it was back then? I remember being excited to watch something air on TV or looking forward to the next new episode of whatever show I was watching. You know what? That's valid as hell. I kind of miss how it was back then too, but it's basically the same thing now. Look at all these streaming services you listed off for this tier list, and they're pulling off exclusive rights to certain shows. So if I want to watch SpongeBob or the new iCarly, I got to go on Paramount. If I want to watch Cartoon Network shows, I got to go on Max. If I want to watch Stranger Things, I got to go on Netflix and so on and so forth. I'm starting to realize this is all a load of bull to make us pay more. You know what? You are spitting right now. This is basically like video game console exclusives, but cranked up to 11. You know what? We all need to band together and only use one exclusive service or better yet, just use none at all. Maybe I will go back to cable or just use YouTube TV. I might have to hop on that train because I'm not a fan of all these streaming services hogging up my bills. Yeah, you guys do you because me personally, I gotta have my young Sheldon on in the background while I scroll through my Bundafield TikTok. What is up everyone? We are back yet again with another tier list. This time we got a holiday tier list to finally determine which are the best of the best in our humble opinions. I'm gonna keep it real. My opinion isn't so humble, but that's because I'm always factually correct about all my opinions and info. Well, I wouldn't say that. Enough, you two. Let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got Black Friday. Now, Black Friday back in the day used to bang when they gave out actual deals, but now I would say that it's not as great as it once was. They need to make Black Friday great again. But no, I feel this a bit, but it's still fun to go out and just look around at the things that are on sale. I still think you can get very good deals. Really, it's just Cyber Monday that sucks ass. You do bring up a good point because when you do find an actual good Black Friday deal, it bangs. But I miss the days when people would get trampled and killed over a 50% off TV. So the OG Black Friday would have been S tier, but I think modern day it belongs closer to A tier. That's a bit morbid, but weirdly enough, I agree. And quite frankly, I do miss seeing the trampled people show up on the news or the fights that would break out. What the hell are you two waffling about? Ugh, you wouldn't get it, Joe. Anyways, let's move on to the next one, and that is Easter, and let me tell you, this holiday doesn't make me feel very hoppy. Don't even start those corny jokes here, Barack. Take that shit joke back and place this awful holiday at C or even D. What even goes on during Easter? Some eggs being hidden and that's it? Yeah, count me out. Don't like that you didn't appreciate my joke, but whatever. I do agree that Easter sucks and I will be placing this into D tier. Up next, we got good old Valentine's Day. I hate this day. No one ever buys me any chocolates and I am always alone without any hot yuu girls by my side. Dude, you have a wife. Yeah, and my point still stands because she's not an uwu baddie. I want an A1 baddie like some Wagyu beef level girl by my side while I play some Valorant. God, I hate that you play that garbage game so much, but as for a rating for this holiday, uh, I'm feeling a C for this one. It's cute to celebrate with your significant other, but I'm not like counting down the days for this thing. Plus you see everyone posting about it and it's like, we get it, you're not alone. Sound a little bitter there, Barack. You and Michelle doing okay? I don't wanna talk about it. Up next, we got St. Patrick's Day, and I kind of mess with my Irish folk and their perpetual drinking habits. I like that this day is an excuse to get hammered, but I also don't like everyone pinching you or being extra as hell just because you aren't wearing green. The green is a necessity, Barack. You can't go around drinking if you're not wearing the green. See me personally, I tell them if they want to see green, they just got to pull down my pants. That is so vile, Joe, and I, I'm going to have to place this into B tier for that comment. And while we're talking about B tier, let me go ahead and put Father's Day there as well. Cool holiday where we get appreciated and get gifts. Yeah, that's at least if your kids love you. Joey, I know your ass is not getting anything from Hunter anytime soon. Joke's on you. He actually offered to take me to a father and son hiking trip over the weekend, so he most definitely cares about me. Yeah, tell us what happened during that weekend. Well, uh, he sort of, well, he kind of mugged me and held me at gunpoint. Then he told me to run my pockets, and once they were all cleared out, he told me to strip, and then blindfolded me and left me in the middle of the woods. But that's just how we mess around. I know he's just teasing me and stuff, ha ha. Holy shit, man. You need to report him to the police. What? No way, that's just how we kid around. I, I swear it's normal father and son activities. You just don't know because you're a girl dad. Yeah, Joey, 
My sons also do all of that just to get another fix of hookers and blow. See, it's normal. I am not touching this further. Up next, we got Hanukkah. And no hate towards my kosher folk. But Christmas clears every day of the year. Tell them, Barry. Listen, all I'm saying is that I never see no Hanukkah specials on TV. That being said, I'll give it a B tier because I do love me kosher food. Up next, we got the 4th of July, and you two already know where this is going. America is number one. Rah! Couldn't have said it better myself, Donald. Fireworks and barbecue plus a long weekend. Give me an instant S tier for that one. And up next, we got Thanksgiving, and I'll be honest here. I am giving this an A tier. I don't think it competes with the S tiers that I have in mind, and I think of it as more of a warm up towards Christmas. Ooh, but what about all the yummy food you're not talking about? Well, that's why it's going into AA tier. The food is the saving grace. Anyways, up next we got Mother's Day, and I am a huge mama's boy, so I appreciate that day a lot. I think another B tier placement for that is in play. Extremely valid placement with these. I can really feel the difference between a Barry List versus a Joe One. Because it's missing the swag factor. Joe, no one says that anymore. Uh, God, anyways, up next we got Halloween and this shit is elite. This is a holiday that bangs both as a kid and as an adult. As a kid, you get to trick or treat and get a metric ton of candy. And as an adult, it gives us all an excuse to party and get drunk as fuck with cool costumes. So for that, I think it belongs in S tier. I still remember when we had our party last year and I dressed up as the Riddler. That was so fun until Donald came. Listen, Joe, you were setting yourself up for those jokes like, come on, the Riddler, let's be serious. You were basically begging me to call you the Diddler all night. Yeah, you kind of set yourself up for that one, Joe. But up next, we got another S tier, and that is Christmas. What can I even say? This is self-explanatory, like it's cool as a kid and even as an adult. The gifts get worse as an adult, though, for you, maybe, but I got an indoor hot tub installed in my gaming room. Oh, can I come over? No. Well, uh, that awkward bit aside, let's tackle New Year's Eve and this kind of bangs. Not deserving of an S tier, and it reminds me that we're always a year older, but the parties for it are fun, so I have to go with a solid A. Just make sure you don't invite Joe to this year's party. We don't want a repeat of last year. Listen, man, it was a new year, and I had to kiss whoever was next to me, or I'd get bad luck. Everyone would have done what I did. Joe, you fucking kissed my dog. What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back at it again with another tier list, and this time we decided it would be good to make a pet tier list for all of our animal-loving subscribers out there. As you can all see, we have a variety of pets on here, most of them belonging in the house. I like how cute that hamster looks. I appreciate that, Joey. The hamster does look pretty cute. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this wonderful list started. And up first, we got man's best friend, and that is dogs. I think I speak for all of us when I put dogs up in S tier. I'm pretty sure we all have dogs too, right? Speak for yourself, Barack. I love dogs, but I would not like to own one. I don't like the idea of having to pick up crap every day and having it annoy me constantly. However, I do love visiting other people's dogs because I get all of the love and chillness that comes with a dog without ever having to deal with all the actual issues that come with dogs. If you ask me personally, I would rather have a cat. They're chill as hell and do their own thing. I could leave a cat out for days and it'll come back and just be chilling. Plus they have their own litter boxes where they do the deed if it isn't outside. But Donald, weren't you just on Barack's ass last tier list for jumping ahead of the list? Way to be a hypocrite, but I can kind of see why you would think that way about cats especially since you're too lazy to take care of your own self, so how could you do it with another creature? Uh, let's relax now, guys, and move on to our next animal, which is snakes. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I like snakes. They're pretty cool. Like, I would most certainly prefer them over every other reptile on this list, I think, so I believe an A tier would be good for this. Now, this is something I can get behind. Snakes are the very definition of chill. Like, have you guys ever met a guy with a snake that wasn't cool? Not as of yet, but I'm sure you owning one would definitely change my mind. Now, up next, we got ferrets, and man, they are extremely cute, but I cannot deal with all the maintenance. Like, they smell really bad after a while, and they just seem like a lot of upkeep, but I won't judge you for owning one. I will, however, grade it on this list and give it a C-tier ranking. You're killing me here, Barry. Do you not like cute and small animals? They're so cool to just have chilling in your pocket or like snoozing with you on the bed. Next, you'll say you hate hamsters. Well, uh, 
Let's just talk about these in order and let's jump to frogs next. And these will also be placed in C tier. They're like snakes, but less chill in my opinion. Like imagine owning a bullfrog and having it keep you up at night with all the noise. If they're poison dart frogs, they look super cool, but the upkeep and environment you gotta make for them is too much. And while I'm venting, please let me go after birds. I freaking hate birds. Like you cannot tell me with a straight face you love your louds ass chirping birds that will peck the hell out of you if they don't like you. Like parrots are cool, but they seem annoying as hell too, but at least they talk. These other birds don't even do anything but squawk. And for those reasons, I will be placing birds into the D tier because they are just awful. Wow, Barack, that's a lot to take in. Is this all coming from the time your brother asked you to take care of his birds? Yeah, and I think I hate it even more because bro will not keep my name out of his mouth and is tweeting some crazy shit again. But he loves me though. God, what an American he is. Yeah, sure, man. Up next, we got cats, and I unfortunately have to agree with Donald and say that they are indeed mad chill. They are direct competitors with dogs, in my opinion, but I still think dogs are better. They still get an S rating from me because they are that elite. See, I'm always right when it comes to the ratings, everyone. Ugh. Don't be annoying about this. Anyways, up next, we got lizards, and I will be placing these into B tier. They're almost as cool as snakes, but I still mess with them. They also taste pretty good. I can't even lie to you guys. You've tasted lizards before. What the heck? Gross. Joe, I know you've put worse in your mouth, but it's whatever. Next, we got turtles, and I like turtles. I don't know why, and I can't really explain it, but they're just cool as hell and belong in A tier. Plus, you got the teenage mutant ninja turtles and stuff. Like, what is there not to like? Plus, they taste good, too. W on the teenage mutant ninja turtles comment. But dude, how many animals on this list have you eaten? Uh, well, how about we talk about monkeys up next? You would want to talk about monkeys, wouldn't you? What the hell does that mean? I just want to change the subject. And, well, I have monkeys going into B tier. Like, it would be pretty cool to have one, but next thing you know, it'll go primal on my ass and claw off my face, so that wouldn't be cool. But monkey, so I think it's cool. Oh boy, if monkeys go that high, then I can't wait to see where you'll place my little hamster buddies. Yeah, Joe, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I hate hamsters, and they barely go above birds, which will place them in C tier. These things just have babies and eat all day. You ever actually own one, Joe? Because they are a hassle and suck so much. Well, I haven't personally, but they look adorable. I would rather get a rabbit at that point, which I will have going into B tier. They're nice little pets you can have in and out the house, and they do their own little thing. Let me guess, you also ate rabbits before, too. Surprisingly, no. But I want to because I heard it's delicious. Maybe we should do a meat tier list next. Oh my god, yes. Ah, ah, ah. What the fuck? He was a little too happy for that one. Yeah, it makes me want to do it less, but whatever. Up next, we got horses, and they are so nice, and you can actually ride these, which automatically places them into A tier. You know, I didn't pin you as a horse girl, Barack. Because I'm not. Sorry, I just like to ride these guys. Now that is definitely what she said. Jesus Christ, that was too easy. Ha ha, very funny. Anyways, up next we got hedgehogs and they look adorable, but I've never seen one in real life surprisingly. So I think a B tier would work well for this. They cannot be worse than hamsters. Wow, and I bet you'll place fish into A tier or something because you hate having cuddly things. No, they actually go into C tier because they suck. But again, not more than birds, bro. Can't suck more than Joe on a Sunday night. Oh yeah, I'd like to see the fish try. Ha oh, wah. Hello everyone, it's me, the Don. Once again, bringing you guys another tier list video. I am not joined by anyone today, but who knows, maybe they'll stop by and give me their opinion on this. I have a super important tier list. Some say it's the most important one of all time. I am doing an ethnicity tier list based off of their Hey, Donald, me and Barack were wondering if you wanted to join us for a game of, uh, what the hell is this, man? Oh, hey, Joey. See, I was making a tier list, and I was just about to get started, funnily enough. Do you want to help me with this? Oh, hamburgers, Donald, you can't be making tier lists like this. Uh, why not? Jesus, Donald, do you not see what is inherently wrong by doing this tier list? Dude, this will get us ran through by the cancel mob more than Riley Reed gets ran through by... Uh, never mind, there's nothing wrong with getting trains ran on you. 
Anyways, you got to hurry and stop sharing your screen before Obama joins. He's going to be wondering why I'm gone for so long. What's going on, guys? Oh, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, no, it's happening. Joey, calm down. I don't see what the big deal is. See, Barack, I'm making an ethnicity tier list based off their... No, you are not fucking doing this shit, Donald. Who in the fuck would ever think to do something this fucking stupid? Oh, wait, that's right. You, Donald, that's who. Jesus Christ, man. I thought we were getting better about this, man. You even gave up the idea on that wall and everything. I thought we had genuine progress on our hands. Joey, why didn't you stop him from even conceiving this absolutely terrible idea? Don't look at me. I just joined because you asked me to tell him something earlier. Guys, I think we are all just blowing this out of proportion, and I think this list is a terrific idea, quite frankly. Jesus, Donald, I can't keep bailing you out anymore on all this BS. I'm done for today. Don't contact me for at least three days, Donald. Oh, man, now you've done it, Donald. Why did you have to go and make that goddamn list? Now I have to calm him down and get him some ice cream. Thanks a lot. Geez, I don't get why everyone is so mad. I was just going to make an ethnicity tier list based off their culture's food. What is up, gang? We are bringing you all another tier list, but this time it's going to be a pretty unique one because we have an inventions tier list. So we got a lot of things on here, and to be honest, some of these pictures I don't get, but I'm sure we can guess what it is. Before we get started, though, I want to apologize to Barack. Oh, you're finally apologizing for all the jokes you were cracking about me during the Call of Duty tier list. No, I want to apologize that there are no bombs in this tier list because I'm sure that would be an S tier ranking invention for you. Oh my God, Joe, with no regard for human life. Wow, this again, huh? Jokes aside, let's get this list started. And up first, we got alcohol, and I think we all know this is an instant S tier. If you ask me personally, I think alcohol might be like at the top of the top as far as human inventions go. Holy W, Joey, but what's your preferred drink? Get me anything that'll mess me up the fastest, but I will shotgun a couple of beers if there's no hard liquor. Moving on, we got cameras, and these are pretty good. Being able to capture a moment in time and share it with other people is pretty tight. I think a solid A tier is in order because we got stuff like videos now and our smartphones have built-in cameras, but I'll put some respect on professional cameras because they take some gorgeous pictures. More importantly, guys, we've got one of Barack's favorite items here, and unfortunately for him, I'll only be placing guns into B tier. They're fun to shoot, and sure, they cause a lot of death and destruction with homicides, wars, and random shootings, but hear me out, without guns, we would not have Call of Duty, so checkmate. I bet Barry is biting his tongue and crying that you're placing his precious tools of destruction so low. You guys act like I'm fascinated with guns when in reality the only two guns I got are my left and right arm. Boo! We did not like that joke. But I guess you're right. The only way you truly love guns is if they had explosive rounds. Hey ho! Oh my god, Joey, let the man breathe. Okay, we'll lay off bombing Barry for a bit and move on to our next invention. And honestly, this is an S tier automatically. Like without planes, we wouldn't be able to fly, and without flying, I wouldn't be able to take my trips to Cancun as easily. I think for most people, they'd agree that it's kind of cool that we can travel so quickly thanks to this metal monster with wings. And I'd agree with them. Up next, we got banks, and I really don't know what to say about banks. Sure, they're super useful, but why put the money in a place where the government can see when instead I can bury all my funds in some place near the desert with undisclosed coordinates? I'll still give it an A tier since I know boring people like banks. Uh, Joe, how much money do you have buried and uh, where is it by chance? Nah, uh, I will not be telling you. I already fell for that trick with Hunter and now I'm out a couple of bands. Let's move on to our next invention and that is the good old fashioned compass. And uh, we don't really use compasses anymore. So unless you're camping or are stranded somewhere, I don't think these are that good and we'll place it into D tier. But you know what I think is good? Freaking cars, and man, oh man, I love me some cars. They're like planes except on the ground, and I, I personally love cars. I think that's an automatic S tier because they're such a vital thing to America, unlike stupid compasses. And you know what? Throw CDs in D tier too, because who the heck is using CDs in this day and age? Um, most people who game on consoles use that, Joey. What the hell are you blabbering about? Oh, well, I download everything for the most part because I can't be bothered going into a store and buying the physical copy. I guess I'm just living in the future unlike everyone else, but uh, up next we got something pretty cool and that is cans. And I think cans are pretty important and actually belong in S tier because without them we wouldn't have canned food and general food preservation. Then following up this S tier, we got another freaking S tier and that is water or more so, I mean plumbing and water flow for things. 
This is an obvious S tier because even though I don't really shower much, I imagine people love to wash their hands and clean themselves instead of building up a healthy immune system with their germs like me personally. That is so vile and filthy, Joe. You could have just said you liked running water because you're able to water your lawn or flush the toilet. Yeah, uh, to tell you the truth, I, well, uh, I don't really flush the toilet that much. I kind of just let it build like a tower till I decide it's too big. Bro is building a tower of dookie. What in the ever living hell? It's to conserve water. So in reality, I'm kind of a genius. The more I think about it, the more I realize how smart I am. Anyways, up next, we got clocks and who really cares what time it is and who even uses old fashioned clocks. Everything is on our phones or watches, so I think this will be our first C tier. But anyways, up next we got a printing press, and I don't think we really use printers as much as we used to, but it's still a pretty big invention that allowed people to have more access to books and literature. I'll give it a C tier because the invention up next kind of made it useless. And that's the internet, like you're watching this using the internet, and you can read anything online or watch any type of video online if you catch my drift. <laughs> but yeah, it gets the most obvious S tier on this freaking planet, bro. Then after that, we got fire, and fire is fire, what can I say? Without this, we'd have no cooked food, and no cooked food means you cannot order any foot-long chili cheese dogs from Sonic, and Lord knows we can't have that. So I have to give fire an S tier as well. Ah, hell nah. My man brought out the foot-long glizzy to the conversation. No way you actually enjoy those things, Joey. Like, let's be real for one second, and can you just admit those things are hot garbage? And even if you do eat those, then that means the dumps you're taking must be borderline toxic gas levels of smell. Like you could probably air out a whole county with your dumps. Nah, those things are delicious. And if you saw the way I throat those things, you'd never question my love for any sort of glizzy. Also, the smell of my turds is not your concern. I doubt your dookies smell like rainbows and posies. But enough of me professing my love for those delicious, delicious meat rods being put into my mouth and my bowel movements. Let's instead, let's talk about this next invention. And I think this is an irrigation system and that grows our crops and waters our plants. But like, who really cares? Because me personally, I think it's only a B tier. You do realize without a complex irrigation system, our crops die and alongside that the animals and with that, you don't get your sonic foot long chili dogs. Nah, by the time that happens, they'll have like hot dog meat made out of plastic and I'll be fine. Up next, we got the light bulb, and this is an instant S tier for me because I'm super scared of the dark, and I do not like not being able to see. Yeah, like if the light goes out, it's always super hard to find, Barack. Now what the fuck? It's also hard to find Joe because it would be dark, dude. Don't get your panties all rustled up. Guys, please, no interrupting me when I'm making the best damn list ever imagined. Well, as I was saying, up next, we got a magnifying glass. This could be glasses, but I don't really care either way because we got contact lenses now and laser eye surgery. So either way, this is a B tier to me. It's okay, and really it only gets this high because I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be glasses. But up next, we got a map, and I fuck with maps even less than I do with glasses. I'll be giving it a C tier. I don't need maps because I can look at everything from my phone, and I don't want to pull up this big old paper map. I'd look so lame if I did that. Don't worry, Joe, you look lame as hell no matter what you do or wear. I don't think I agree with that. I think I look pretty rad. But anyways, up next, we got what I presume to be an engine and we got all forms of energy slash power coming up next. But as for engines, well, uh, they power cars and other stuff. So I have to give it a B tier. Then we got windmills and I think they generate power and are eco-friendly, so that's a B tier. Then we got nuclear energy and that's like the best one, right? I don't really know but it uses nuclear energy and that sounds cool, so I have to give it an A tier. Dude, have you not seen what happened in Chernobyl? Oh, I saw that series online, it was pretty cool, but what does that show have to do with real life stuff? Joe, it's based on a real life nuclear power plant that blew up and devastated all forms of life in the surrounding area. That place is inhospitable. Yeah, but that shit looked kind of dope in the series, so I'm gonna have to keep it there. Then we got what I think is an alphabet. It's a book with letters, so let's just call it the alphabet, and that's pretty important for speaking and learning, so I think an A tier is in order. Then after that, we got penicillin, and I don't use it personally, but I know hella people do, so let's go ahead and give it a fat B tier. Jesus Christ, Joey, you're running through these last ones. Are you going to at least talk about them a little, or why they're that low? Nah, I'm more excited to talk about the next invention, which is utensils. These are great for when I'm eating soup or something that I can't hold, but other than that, I'm using my hands like some animal. I think a solid A tier is set for that, and we got a pretty bad one up next, and that is the radio. I only use the radio whenever the Bluetooth in my car is cooked, 
and I'm forced to listen to whatever sorry ass DJ has to put on. I will admit it was popping in my early days when I was a kid, so I have to put some respect on it and give it a C tier. Yeah, the radio isn't too awful. Like, I think it can still be good, but it has to be done online only. And there's also that new artificial intelligence DJ that Spotify has. That doesn't really count. It's more like a randomized playlist, but it's whatever. Up next, we got the wheel. And without this, I don't think like cars, planes, and anything circular would even be thought of. Like, isn't this the go-to for like explaining human inventions? I think this is an easy S tier. And up next, we got another S tier, I think, because we got satellites. And without satellites, we would not be able to use the internet or a lot of things in general. Due to the sheer necessity of it, I feel like it has to be high up. Oh man, I'm looking at what's next and I'm salivating. We got some big heavy hitters up next. Are you excited about the train? Are you uh, a little autistic? No, you dumbass. I'm talking about the TV and smartphone. Oh, I wouldn't have blamed you for liking trains. I fuck with them. Well, now I got to talk about these next two and we got TVs slash displays. And that's another automatic S tier because we need displays for almost everything. And TV in general is popping and amazing. Then we got smartphones. And again, this is an easy S tier because these goddamn things do everything. One moment I'm filing my taxes and then in the next I am on the hub. Dude, what the hell don't talk about that on our video? I never specified which hub, but uh, it's exactly the one you think it is. And now that we're talking about it, I uh, wanna go on it. So let's hurry and finish. And our last two entries are trains. And I assume electricity is after that. As for trains, I think they're pretty cool and good for transport, especially for places like Europe but we're in America, so they're only half useful, but I like to go on a train and stare out the window and vibe to some tunes. So for the vibes alone, I give trains an A tier and wrapping up the list, I'll give electricity an S tier. I don't feel like I have to explain this at all. What about people who live off the grid? And what about those innocent lives you took in the Middle East? Yeah, let's not mention either. What is up, gang of Lang? We are back with another tier list and I unfortunately got stuck with making one about random school subjects, how freaking fun. Listen. Man, we all had choices and you were too indecisive and couldn't make a choice fast enough, so you got stuck with that one. Yeah, yeah, but I already know the next week I have to get the best list or else I'm gonna throw a fit. But don't worry, Barack, I won't take your chicken wing tier list from you. I know you got that in the bag and I can't compete with you when it comes to your elite chicken knowledge. God, you are such an idiot, Donald. But in this very instance, you are correct. Because as a matter of fact, I do happen to be a wing expert, so I'm only like half mad that you said such a dumb thing. Whoa, whoa, let's keep it real here because we all know that I am the real wing expert here. Joe, you like Little Caesar's wings, and for that alone, I would give you like a negative wing rating, but let's save that wing talk for next week and go ahead and get started with this school subject list. And up first, we got chemistry. And who the hell likes chemistry? Like you think I care at all about the periodic table and what compounds mix with what I will admit the experiments are cool and you could play with fire and stuff, so like that kind of gets it a higher ranking than what it actually deserves. Like chemistry with no lab exercises would be an automatic F tier, but since it does have that, I will give it a C tier for allowing me to play with Bunsen burners. I used to use those Bunsen burners to cook up my dogs. Joe, you know how dangerous and reckless that is, the amount of chemicals in a lab and, you know, using actual lab supplies to cook your dog? Don't knock it till you try it. It'll knock me out if I try any Bunsen dogs. But anyways, up next we got a pretty fun one and that's art. I mess with drawing and sculpting stuff. I don't know if you guys know this, but I happen to be a connoisseur of the fine arts. Sure you are. Please tell me what art you happen to be interested in. Oh, it's almost all self-portraits of myself and they're all life-sized as well. If you guys come to my house next time, I have a room dedicated to my sculptures and art. I call it the bust room and without it, I would be sad. So I have to give art an A rating. Oh, I'll be in the bust room, busting right in the bust room. Yeah, uh, we may have to have a rain check on that. But anyways, up next we got biology and I don't really care much about biology. Like who really cares about how the human body works and all that dumb stuff? Like if you ask me, the only biology I care about is female biology if you catch my drift. I'll still unfortunately be placing this into D tier. I'm gonna definitely have to agree with you there, Donald. I don't care much about that stuff either. I think you guys are undervaluing the importance of understanding how our body works and how the different things we ingest or do can affect our bodies. And without biology, we wouldn't know those things. Blah, blah, blah. I do not care about any of that, Barack. I am a freaking unit and I don't need to understand biology to know that the Don is amazing. But more importantly, we got an A tier subject up next and that is foreign language classes. 
Without these, I would not be able to order from my favorite Mexican place. I like to dazzle them with my immaculate Spanish pronunciation. I tell them, hola, me puede dar un taco por favor. Jesus, just hearing my amazing Spanish gives me goosebumps. Uh, do you actually go around talking like that to people who speak Spanish? Duh, and when I do, I know they love it because they always smile and laugh because I am a very charismatic man. Mi español es muy, muy caliente, as they say, and it's also biblioteca baño. Well enough of my superb Spanish, and let's talk about the next one. And we got history, and man, oh man, I have to place this into S tier. Like I am going to be in history books. Is that not amazing? One day, some future young Trump will open up his history book and see me splattered all over a page, and I'm sure they'll be so proud of their grand, grand, grand pappy. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be other people splattering all over your page. Don't you worry. Gross Joe and Donald, we are all presidents. So uh, I am pretty sure we are all going to be in a history book. Yeah, whatever. I doubt Sleepy Joe here will get anything in any book, but you guys can stay getting jealous. The next one we got is financial literacy, and honestly, this is an A tier for me. Everyone needs to go read my book and learn the way to handle their money and learn from one of the best. While I agree that financial literacy is important, I really don't think anyone should read his book. You're better off just gambling everything on a random racehorse. Now that would be a page straight from the book of Biden if you ask me. Yeah, and that sounds like the dumbest thing I have ever heard because we all know you are better off betting it all in the casino, or even better yet, betting it all on some random sports team. But that's neither here nor there, because up next we got another goaded subject, and that is physical education. And the only educating I'm doing is teaching those punks how to get demolished in any sport of their choosing. This is an easy S tier for me. I am also the embodiment of physical health. Like one look at the Don and you'll be like, God damn now that is a male in peak physical condition. I don't think a single soul has ever said that, Donald. Let's keep it real. Plus, last time we played basketball, I beat you 21 to zero. So like, how the hell are you gonna tell anyone here that you dominate? Well, it's pretty obvious that you beat me in basketball. Like, who are we kidding here? You're naturally and genetically talented Barack. That is not a compliment at all. And we also played golf and I beat you badly in that too. I threw out my hip that day, so uh, that does not count at all. What about when we played shuffleboard and I beat you? Not a real sport, so there you go. Listen guys, I'm done trying to explain myself here. You all should know that I dominate anything I do as long as I'm not injured. I'll give shuffleboard to Joey because like I said, that is not a real sport. So I really don't care if I lose that one if I am being totally honest here. All that nonsense aside, let us move on to our next subject, which is language arts. Man, you have to be a big ass nerd to genuinely enjoy learning grammar and how to actually spell things. I will admit that this class does bang when you're doing some reading because I mess with some cool stories. Like Joe, you remind me of Lenny from Mice of Men. I have never read that. The only books a motherfucker like me has read was the Percy Jackson and Hunger Games books. Joe, you were like 50 or 60 when those books came out. Yeah, your point is what exactly? Dude, if those are the only books you read for the first 60 years of your life, then I am seriously worried about you. No, I mean, I uh, did technically read other stuff, but I don't think uh, hentai really counts. But if it did, then I'd be like master prestige level in reading. Jesus Christ, Joe. Now hold on, he may have cooked with that one, not gonna lie. I think language art still deserves a B tier because I actually do enjoy stories and as you all know, I am a published author, but that's enough of that. Let's move on to the real nerd shit, and that is math. Please don't tell me any of our precious subscribers actually enjoy math. Like I am sorry to anyone who loves it because this is going to be our very first F tier, and I am not ashamed of putting there at all. Like the only time I use math is whenever I'm counting change, but if you start throwing in the alphabet into my math, then you got me fucked up, man. I will say, though, if you genuinely enjoy math, I respect the hell out of that because that's like looking at Lizzo and telling yourself, wow, this is the most beautiful woman on all of planet Earth. Like we all know damn well she ain't, but if you're taking one for the team, then more power to you. What if I were to tell you that I would not mind me a piece of that sweet Lizzo cake? A Joe, you dirty, dirty dog. But enough Lizzo talk, and let's talk about the next subject, which is music. I have lots of talented friends in the music industry, and Joe, before you even ask, you are definitely not one of them, but learning how to play music seems pretty cool and chill. And for that, I think I'll give it a solid A tier. After that, we got another boring subject, but again, much like with chemistry, at least you can perform experiments and do slightly cooler stuff than in biology, so I think I have to give physics a solid C tier as well. That's a bit valid, but I feel like people hate physics a lot more than they hate chemistry. 
So I don't know how this rating will go down with the public. Well, the Don said it was a C tier, so they should not be disagreeing with me. But more importantly, what is the difference between social studies and history? Aren't they like the same thing? Well, you see, social studies include the subjects of history, geography, economics, civics, and sociology. Through all of that, the elements of ethics, psychology, philosophy, anthropology, art, and literature are incorporated into the subject field itself. Snooze! I think that sounds like a B tier to me. Up next, we got technology, and I don't even know what you would do in a class like that, but I already know it has to be banging. I have to give this an S. I assume you use computers and stuff, so that sounds cool. After that, though, we got something that just stunk up the place, and that is geometry. This is just math, but with angles and shapes, and I'm not a fan of that either. Place this garbage into F tier. Valid for the technology take, but why do you hate math so much? I wasn't good at it, and it bores the hell out of me. Our final entry, however, is not boring at all, though, because we got woodshop, and this is an automatic S tier. You'd all be amazed with the way I work with my wood. Oh, I'd love to see the way you work with that wood, Donald. Yeah, I can't do that, but I think woodshop is one of the best blow-off classes, and I feel damn proud making stuff and then actually using it. Like, I made a stool, and I still use it to this day. Yeah, I also made a stool. Well, uh, it's more like a bench than a stool. I don't really use it anymore either because it was really thorny and gave me constant splinters, and uh, it just kind of sucked. Doesn't surprise me you sucked at Woodshop Joe. Whoa, whoa, ease up on Joe a little there, Donald. It doesn't matter if you were good or bad at certain subjects, and it is okay that Joey is bad at Woodshop. Mm, Barry, you were bad at Woodshop, weren't you? Uh, as a matter of fact, I was, but how did you guess that? Was it me standing up for Joe just then? Did that tip it off? Because if that's the reason, then remind me to never stick up for Joe again. Oh, what did I do? Nah, it wasn't because you stood up for Joe. The reason is actually a lot more complex and nuanced than that. Okay, so uh, what gave it away? Because I never told you I took woodshop before. Oh, that's super easy. Uh -huh. The reason why is because you're black. What is up, gang? We are back with another video, and this time we're going to be making our long-awaited seasons tier list. Please tell me who was waiting for this tier list, because I can tell you personally that the Don was not head over heels for this. That's because you're a hater, Donald. Try to be more like the Joe dog and learn to appreciate things instead of being bitter. The only way I can be more like you, Joe, is if I sleep through multiple concussions or get some major CTE. Settle down, you two, but I personally was waiting for this list. It'll be a nice and short one for once. And we can just talk about why we prefer what season. So let's go ahead and get this list started because up first we got fall. Now, what are we thinking about fall? Because I want to get everyone's opinions on this. Because if you ask me personally, I am not a fan of fall. Like all those goddamn leaves falling and then the cold starts to come, but it's not winter cold. It's like breezy cold one day and then warm the next. It's all just very wishy-washy and it just cannot decide what it wants to be. Yeah, I do not like fall at all. Like who the hell wants to rake leaves? I am a hater of autumn and I just don't get the love for it. Like, sure, someone can argue that it has Thanksgiving, so that might be a little cool to have as a holiday, but man, I cannot get over the fact that the weather is so garbage more than half of the time that it's autumn. You guys are underappreciating fall weather and how it's a nice intro or like a transition into winter. Like, it obviously can't go from being hot as hell and then have it be snowing the very next day. We need that transitional period in order to have winter. I don't think anyone is arguing over the fact that it may be necessary for winter or that the transition in weather is needed, but like who the hell actually enjoys it? Like you have to either fully wait for winter to come or just forget about wearing shirts and tank tops because it's not summer weather anymore. What about jumping into leaves? Next, you're gonna tell me that you don't like doing that during fall weather. Joe, unless you're like seven, I don't think anyone enjoys doing that. Then you get all itchy from that and you realize those leaves probably have all sorts of grubs and insects in them and now they are basically all over you. Yeah, I think we've decided. And by we, I think me and Donald have decided that this belongs in last place. I just don't see much value in autumn, especially when we have these next ones coming up and the one after this is what I presume to be spring. Now, I think I have an idea of how I feel about spring and you know how we were basically just shitting on fall for being the transition to winter. Well, spring is basically the transition to summer. And other than seeing plants bloom and the change from seeing snow melt all around you, I just don't see a lot of value in it. Like my allergies go crazy during spring and it is a pain to just walk out and not be sneezing 24 seven. How about you get your immune system up, you soy boy? 
If your best argument for spring is that a little allergy flare-ups prevents you from doing anything, then why don't you get some medicine and enjoy the outside? The morning dew and a nice spring breeze should be enough to get anyone happy to be alive. Joe, you know that pollen is literally plant jizz. Now, me personally, I refuse to inhale any sort of seminal fluid, and I know the same does not apply to you. However, I will agree with Barack in that this is just another transitional period, and it really, truly does not hit as hard. Definitely hits harder than fall, that's for sure. But if you put it up against summer or winter, I don't know, man, like maybe you can argue for winter, but if you're a fan of the cold and snow, not to mention Christmas and New Year's, then I really don't see an argument for spring. The argument is that we should all appreciate the flowers and greenery that bloom in spring. Yeah, I don't care enough to be honest. Uh, do you care, Donald? Not one single bit. It's settled then. We will be placing spring into our third tier. Moving past that, we got our two heavy contenders for for top two. What are we thinking, fellas? Because I personally want winter going number one. I am a fan of Christmas and just the cold overall. Like I said in our weather tier list, it gives us all an excuse to stay inside and just relax with family. Or if you're someone like me, you will just play video games and binge TV shows all day without feeling bad about it. Because what else are you gonna do when it's negative eight degrees outside? I know damn well I am not going out there to have a snowball fight, but actually, I would consider some skiing if the opportunity presented itself. Okay, I like the cold and winter a lot, but man, I don't think I prefer winter overall, especially when compared to summer. Like, I want to be relaxing on the beach with a nice cold drink and my feet in the sand. You cannot do that during winter, and sure, skiing is nice and fun, but why the hell would I do that when instead I can go out for a nice and refreshing swim? What if it's summer and there is no pool or anything to cool down the heat? then it just ends up being a crappy and hot time. Man, go drink some water or use your AC more. I don't know what you want me to say there. All that sounds like something to me. Want to know what that something is, Barack? What does it sound like to you, Donald? Sounds like a goddamn personal problem. I fully am a part of the summer elite forces and will appreciate my trips to Cancun or wherever the hell I decide to go a lot more in the summer than I ever would in the winter. Listen, man, it just sounds like we will be at odds for this. So unfortunately, we are going to have to ask the quiet man in the room here. And much to all of our disappointment, that is Joey. So what do you make of all this? Simple answer here, gentlemen. It's obviously summer that belongs number one. Ha! Damn it. Why is that, Joe? I thought you liked staying inside just as much as I do. Oh, I do. But when it's summer season, something special happens that will never occur in any other season. And what is it, Joe? Girls in bikinis. God damn it. He is spitting. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list, and we want to shout out everyone for giving much love to our chicken wing tier list. You guys made Barack's day with that one, and since we've been seeing people beg for a music tier list, I figured I would be a man of the people and piss everyone off when I rate their favorite genre of music low. We were originally going to do a PlayStation exclusives tier list, but that can be held off for another list. Yeah, yeah, Joe, that's a pretty long intro. Can we get into what the people really want? Donald, do not rush me. Making a tier list is like taking care of a newborn child. If we cause it any disturbance, then it'll grow up to hate you and end up doing coke while recording it on camera. Uh, you speaking from personal experience, Joey? I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's instead dive first into this tier list. And up first, we got alternative metal pop and lastly rock. And here's the thing with these alternative genres. They are pretty experimental and have a unique sound that can sometimes lead to some pretty good bangers. What I've noticed personally is that it's a lot of hit or miss with these three, and you really have to rummage through a lot of garbage in order to find the good stuff. To be fair to the garbage, though, it isn't entirely their fault, as most of the time it is underground bands or artists that just haven't hit their stride yet or are just starting off their music career, so you can't hate it too much. I'd give alternative metal and pop a B tier, but I will actually be giving an A tier for alternative rock because I find that it bangs more often than not. Wow, I cannot lie. I, an actual nuanced take was not something I was expecting from you, Joey. Well, prepare for the unexpected Barack. I'm more than just a handsome man who happens to be president. You're only the president part, Joe, because you and handsome never go together. Yeah, well, you and handsome also don't go together. Boom, roasted. But enough of that. Let's get on to our next set of music genres, and that'll be blues, Christian, and country. I personally have blues music in B tier because even though I don't enjoy it that much, I can recognize that it heavily impacted a lot of genres that a ton of people love and cherish. So I'll give it legacy points, but ultimately this belongs in B tier for me. Then if we talk about classical music, well, 
I am not a fan of this as well. Like, don't get me wrong, it can be a little nice, especially for thinking music or like, apparently this music makes you smarter, but I don't know. Me personally, if I'm in the car, I will not be asking my friends, hey, yo, Donald, can you put on my favorite song? It's called Toccata and Fugue in D minor by J.S. Bach. Like you all have me fucked up if you think I will say that around the ladies. Still though, I'll give it a solid C tier because that's the stuff they'd play back in like the medieval era. But we move on to our real stinker, which is Christian music. I am sorry to any Christians out there, but I have not found any good Christian music in existence. I will have to place this into F tier. Go figure, the second Catholic president, we have rates good old fashioned Christian music so low. I can't even lie, Donald. Have you ever heard Christian rap? Okay, well that doesn't count because it is awful. Oh, but it does, and whenever I listen to that, it just stinks up my room. Anyways, up next we got country, and I love me some country, but there is a slight caveat. I only listen to country in the summer. Like when I think of country, I think of some nice ass weather, windows rolled down in my car, or just sitting outside relaxing with a nice cold one. I don't really listen to country that much outside of summertime, but I still give it an A tier for being clutched during that time. But I'd understand people placing it in S tier. Common Joey L, because this definitely belongs in S tier. Like just because you listen to that shit in the summer doesn't mean that we all just abide by your rules. I am a big country fan and will have that on at all times of the year. Yeah, and I just said I'd respect that, bro. This is my list though, and I have it going there. I even have it grouped up with our next entry which is EDM music, because I also have that going into A tier. Like, have you guys ever seen the girls at the raves? Boy, howdy, let me tell you that it almost got an S tier from me, but I think A is a nice place for it. How are you going to rate a whole music genre just based on what girls look like Joe? Like how I just did, I don't know what you mean by that. I kind of did it pretty easily, but anyways, up next we got emo music and folk music, and to tell you all the truth, I don't really like either, but I'll respect them enough to merit a C tier because I feel like putting it in D tier would be a bit too mean. I understand that a lot of people enjoy listening to this, but for me personally, it is just a no. Okay, but in all seriousness, who listens to emo music anyways, and what the hell is folk music? Come on, Donald, put a bit of respect on my chemical romance, and as for the folk music, well, it's kind of like soft-spoken songs that come in the form of stories, I uh, think. Don't quote me on that. No way your ass said to respect my chemical romance. The Joe Dog said what he said, but anyways, let's move on. And our next two are funk and hardcore punk. And I got funk going into B tier because I respect the hell out of the, the Isley Brothers and Marvin Gaye. This is a solid as hell genre of music and still holds up. But as for the hardcore punk, yeah, the Joe Dog is most definitely not rocking with that. I have it going into D tier because I think anything with hardcore in the title is a bit too much. Like you're doing too much and you should diversify instead of going all in. Joe, that is literally the whole point of it. it they don't want to diversify, but instead solidify their foundation of punk music and go even harder. Well, it sounds like shit, so maybe they shouldn't. Up next, we have an S tier. And to all my indie music haters, I want you all to suck on some Joe Balls because indie is quite literally one of the best genres. The reason for this is because indie isn't just one thing. It can literally be any sound at all. You got indie rock, indie pop, indie alt, and the list goes on. But the point is that this is just music produced without any outside influence. This can be a guy who is making some bangers out of his mom's basement, or just someone who separated from their label because it was infecting their sound too much. And I respect the hell out of people who do their own thing. It's a free spirit sort of thing, and when people experiment with their sounds or aren't influenced by mainstream stuff, you can get some dangerous bangers on your hands. You say you like free spirits. Is that why you're so lenient with Hunter all the time? Is he a free spirit to you? Well, he's free, just uh, not free from the coke, but uh, I'm sure one day he will be, but enough of my son who hates me. Let's talk about instrumental music only, and I have to keep it real with everyone. This is a D tier. I enjoy it a lot, but I feel like on its own, I won't be listening to instrumentals unless I really mess with the artist, but even then, I'd rather hear the original song with lyrics or what have you. Following that, we got another freaking S tier, and that is jazz. Who doesn't like jazz? It's honestly more relaxing than classical music, and it just makes me feel good, like I can maybe relax on my couch with a bit of whiskey. Or it can make me feel like I'm some detective in the 50s and I am trying to crack a case for a murder. I love jazz. Wow, that's high for jazz, but I love playing some Frank Sinatra during Christmas or dusting off an old Louis Armstrong record every now and then. I am more of a Miles Davis type of guy, but I respect that. Following that, we got two foreign entries here, and that is Korean pop and Latin music. 
And I feel like for both, I will put them into a B tier. I like them both a lot and I can jive with them, but what the fuck are they saying? I can't speak for the Koreans, but I know that the Latin music gets muy very loco and they just talk about girls and doing the deed. Oh shit. I may have to raise that one up higher, not gonna lie. But I have to talk about this next one. I know a lot of people are metalheads, but I regret to inform you that I am placing metal into uh, S tier. Had you there for a bit, didn't I? I was about to split a wig, man, I can't even lie. I would have hounded you and forced you to change this rating. Well, I know you're used to not having people consent, but fortunately for me, I do indeed like metal music. I just wanted to pull a fast one on the audience a bit. Uh, up next, we got opera. And this is kind of mid, but saying you went to see an opera is kind of a flex. Like you tell people, I just attended the opera the other day. They're gonna look at you like, God damn, this guy is fancy. But in reality, they don't know. I spent the whole day prior just watching TV and eating hot dogs in my stained wife beater and boxers. What type of stains? Lots of mustard and some ketchup. If you're in a pinch, you can suck on that part of the shirt and get a little flavor bomb in your mouth. That is so asinine. Yeah, we all know my ass is a nine, but flattery will get you nowhere, Barry. Up next, we got a triple threat because these next three all happen to be S tiers. I mess with pop music heavily, and if you're a hater on pop, then I can tell you get no play. Joe, out of everyone here, you get the least amount of girls. Yeah, because uh, you don't see them. Anyways, pop is a banger because it's just so catchy and I will always bop to Call Me Maybe or some poker face. And the other two belong in S tier because post genres and prog genres encompass a lot of things. Like you'd have to Google both, but just know that they have too many things in them to be left out. Like it's just a catalog of genres and it quite frankly isn't fair that they're on this list. Moving on from those two, though we got punk music, and I am not huge into the punk scene, but I'd give it a solid B tier. Cannot wait to hear what Barack would rate rap at probably an S tier in his book. Uh, it actually is deserving of an S, and you know I am into more music than just that, if you actually paid attention to my end of the year best music playlists I make. Yeah, he actually does make those things, but this is my list, and I say, uh, yeah, uh, rap belongs in S tier. Every time I hear Sexy Red talk about Hellcats and her coochie, I'm always amazed by the marvelous lyrical choices in her music, to quote her, my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. And I uh, unfortunately can inform you that one of those things is not true. Gross Joe. Yeah, but someone had to find out and I might as well let it be me. Next up, we got reggae and rock. And for reggae, I am feeling a solid A tier. I really like listening to that. And Hunter tells me they play that in a lot of clubs in Miami. I wish I'd know, but he never invites me. Oh, it's amazing. I went there with him recently. Oh, man. I wish I could have gone. But anyways, after that, we got rock, and this is a freaking staple. And no one can argue with me, because this is an automatic S tier. For theater and musicals, you guys can most definitely argue with me, because I am placing this into D tier. I freaking hate musicals whenever they're in my shows, so I doubt I'd like them as a genre. That's a bit hateful. Like, how is opera higher than theater? Are you a theater kid or something It goes there? Because I said so, I am not trying to fucking watch Footloose. But let's hurry and wrap this up and finish off the list. We got trap music and R&B. I'll give trap music a solid B because it can be good at times, but I am somewhat indifferent. But with R&B, oh man, I will twerk for this genre. Give me some smooth talking R. Kelly music and I will forgive him for peeing on those little girls. Now hold on, let him cook here. Free R. Kelly. Do not free him, he does not speak for us. What is up, gang? We're back with another ranking video, and this time around, we are going to be ranking the Games of the Year contenders. I know that it was already revealed what the Game of the Year was, but this is our personal presidential version of that, so hopefully you guys all enjoy this video. I don't get how we're making a Game of the Year tier list, yet I see no games with any baddies in sight, like what happened to the good old days where we had female-led protagonists, and they made me quiver and salivate just at the thought of being near them. I don't care much about the female protagonist, but we definitely need more baddies. Like the only ones on this list that have any baddies is Baldur's Gate 3. Catch me romancing Shadowheart seven days a week, every week of the month. Oh man, I totally forgot about that. I definitely spent a long bit of time just uh, analyzing the great dialogue options and cutscenes this game has to offer. Uh, only with the female characters though. Okay, that's enough. I don't need this to be the main topic of the video when we're literally just starting it. I think what I'll base the grading system on is purely off personal preference because quite honestly, all of these games were made with love and care. Like all of these are sound and solid, but I definitely had more fun and spent more time playing certain games rather than others. 
Let's get this ranking started and talk about The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. How are we feeling about it, fellas? Zelda is a baddie, and I can glue together some rocks and make some contraption with it. For me personally, it was probably the second best game I played this year. I spent hours playing this thing and remembered that we even reviewed this thing, guys. Yeah, I remember that, but quite honestly, I don't think I played beyond what we did for the review. Like, I think I have 45 hours on the game and just eventually forgot about it. Don't get me wrong, I still really like the game and consider it one of the best on this list, but I can't give that high of a ranking to a game I didn't finish and then proceeded to get somewhat bored of it sometime after. Like, I played it religiously and then boom, I hit a massive wall, and to this day, I have yet to pick up the game again. I'd still give it like a third place on this list. Looks like I'm the tiebreaker here. And Joe, I love the fact that I am breaking this bad news to you, but I actually don't think it belongs in second place either. I have like 100 hours in the game, but I did the duplication glitch and I duped a bunch of diamonds and then sold them and bought armor and I don't know. I just felt kind of dirty after that and lost my will to play the game further. It remains untouched like with Barry here, and I know it was my fault for sullying the honor of the game by duplicating the items, and I know it isn't the game's fault at all and I should actually be blamed for it, but here's my rebuttal. I, uh, don't care. It goes in third place. No! Damn, that's tough, Joe. I am sorry we had to do that to you. It's okay because we have one of your other favorite releases this year. Do you see it? It's Super Mario Wonder, and you love that game. Heck yes. I love me some good Super Mario 2D platforming games, and this one is so full of energy and character. Not to mention, it's just like a good return to form for Mario. Where are we placing this, fellas? I won't mind number one because it produced my favorite Rule 34 fan art of Princess Peach in her elephant mode, but I also wouldn't mind second place either. Oh man, I cannot wait to break it to him. Break what to me? Yeah, Joe, uh, me and Donald haven't played much of it because he just got the game like two days ago. And I feel like we can't place it that high because of that reason. I just prefer 3D platforming Mario games, to be quite frank. Okay, so is this going into fourth place instead? That hurts. I can handle it. I'm thinking we place this into fifth place. Like, that's not a bad ranking either, Joe. Remember, these games are all freaking amazing. And compared to the other games above it, I just feel like it could not compete, in my opinion. It definitely is the best platformer on this list, though. Jesus Christ, the Joe heads are eventually gonna have to rise up against you guys if you keep dishonoring me like this. Donald, please tell me you think otherwise. I don't know why you think I would be on your side, but me personally, I think it should be lower, but I'll take fifth place. Okay, so fifth place it is. Sorry, Joe, but it is not better than what I have going above it. And speaking of that, we got what I think is fourth place. And that is Alan Wake 2. Many of you might be asking yourselves, what the hell is Alan Wake 2? And if you have not played it, then you are missing out, especially if you love yourself some horror games. I know Joe here would have agreed if he wasn't so scared of playing horror games. I'm not scared of horror games. If anything, they're scared of me. They are not underage girls, so there is no way they'd be terrified of you, Joe. But as for your ranking, Barack, I think I'd have to agree because I did enjoy Tears of the Kingdom more. And if you're placing what I think you're gonna place above it, then I also have to agree with this placement. As a fan of horror games, I think we needed more stuff like this because we need more greatness in that genre. Glad you agreed, Donald. And even though our next entry technically qualifies for that genre, I just feel like it wasn't that scary, to be honest. Like, I loved the Resident Evil 7 vibes more, and I have this game going into sixth place. Okay, I loved Resident Evil 4, and I am sure people watching do as well, so you'll have to explain yourself. Okay, okay, hear me out. I don't think a remake should be a contender for Game of the Year. I think there should be a whole new category for it, like Remake of the Year, because it simply isn't fair to put it up against these new games with fresh and new ideas. I think this game would have won Remake of the Year, and with the amount of games getting remastered and remade, I definitely think we should add that as a category moving forward. I still really love the game, don't get me wrong, people. I am not a hater, but rather I think this should get its own flowers and not be lumped in with others in a category that I think it very clearly was not going to win. Okay, after explaining yourself, I actually somewhat agree with that. There should be a separate category for it, but if the remake is just that amazing, I think it should still be in contention for Game of the Year. But either way, I can see where you're coming from. Thanks, Donald. But up next, we got our final two contenders for our personal Game of the Year rankings, and that is Spider-Man and Baldur's Gate 3. 
Having played both, I can tell you all that I am making a very informed decision on this, and I know a ton of Spider-Man fans were freaking out when they saw the Game Awards live and Baldur's Gate 3 won Game of the Year over Spider-Man 2. And here in this tier list, I am announcing the same exact result. I think Spider-Man 2 belongs in second and debatably third place, if I am being quite honest. The main reason I am placing it above Tears of the Kingdom is because I actually finished Spider-Man 2 and was able to not get overwhelmed by the whole experience and enjoyed it for what it was. It's like a roller coaster, you hop on board and you have a ton of fun during it, but it's a somewhat short experience, but whilst you're playing it, you don't really realize that it was a short time. You get so engulfed by the story, and honestly, it's a lot like a Marvel movie. Back when they were good though, but that's a whole other discussion. But yeah, it's like an interactive movie experience, and I personally love Spider-Man a lot, and he is my favorite superhero, and I have to give him his flowers for this performance. That's some hardcore glazing over a superhero game, but yeah, to be honest, you could have swapped the placement with Tears of the Kingdom and Spider-Man, but either way, it doesn't matter, because the real Game of the Year winner is the one you left for last, and I am sure Joey has no objection to this one. Yeah, uh, I actually don't, and you all know this. We played this game for hours upon hours, and it was basically me, Donald, and Barack playing with our custom characters while we all competed for Shadowheart's love. My four foot ten halfling definitely did bag the baddie, and we uh, had some very good cutscenes playing. Let me tell you, I had to mute my microphone at times because my little Joe head wanted to take a gander at the screen. Jesus, that is so gross and vile. You could have talked about so many things like the combat mechanics being interesting and engaging. You could have talked about the various dialogue options and how you can interact with the world and characters around you to manipulate any outcome you want. Or you could have just mentioned the superb voice acting and character design. Nah, I don't think I will. Figured Joe would do that, but yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing. Everyone go check it out. Any final words, Barack? Uh, not really. This video was just made to glaze Baldur's Gate 3 some more. I'll glaze Shadowheart with my special creme fraiche some more if we keep talking about it any longer. I have the game pulled up right now and just took off all of her armor and clothes. That's it. Cut the video before we hear this old man moan. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we are going to hit everyone with a months of the year tier list. And we figured we'd do this considering it's almost the end of the year by the time this is recording and we've been through every month of the year, so now is the best time to do this grading. What if I love every month of the year? What if I am so thankful to be alive that I just appreciate every waking moment and learned that every single day of every single month has its ups and downs, but we need that to truly appreciate the beauty behind everything. Sure, we might love Christmas, but we needed the autumn months to get to our beloved winter season. Joe. Yeah? Shut the hell up. Thanks, Donald and Joe. We do not care about what you have to say, Joe, because we are making a goddamn tier list and that is final. Now let's get this baby started, and if you all haven't noticed, we actually put these months in order, so uh, just wanted to point out that nice little touch, but anyways, as I was saying, January, man, what don't I have to say about this month? It's a fantastic time to introduce the new year, and really is a time for change for a lot of people. Everyone has their New Year's resolutions, and tons of people fail it within that month. I don't even know how that happens, but apparently it does. I remember I challenged Joe to have a New Year's resolution to stop being so creepy, and that dude failed it literally a week later. Listen, man, I asked you to define creepy. You didn't give me an exact definition, so I had to freestyle that, and I would say that I am still holding that resolution up proudly to this day. Joe, you made my neighbor move within a week of meeting her for the first time because you kept stalking her house at night and calling their phones and doing nothing but breathing into the microphone. That's not even mentioning the stuff you did to her kids at the park. Listen, man, they were simply asking for it. Jesus Christ, please let's not do this and let's instead focus on the ranking. What are we thinking here, fellas? Because I am leaning towards an A tier because I love the new year. Yeah, I'd say an A tier fits right because it is a cool way to start everything off. Uh, I'd take it or leave it. What the hell does that even mean, Joe? You can't just take it or leave it. It's a goddamn month out of the year and we have to rank it. You know what? I am just putting it in A tier. Anyways, moving past that, we got February and I won't lie. I don't really vibe with this month. I got to do so many things for Michelle and it's a short month, so I don't even think anything eventful happens here. Yeah, screw Valentine's Day. Milani already has her birthday, Mother's Day, and Christmas. Now you're telling me there's a whole other day that I have to worry about just to get her shit. Ha, ah, you guys are such nincompoops. You guys don't understand the beauty and romance in simple days like this. 
I love dispersing my love to the world and treasure Valentine's Day. Joe, the little girls you send chocolates to are not your Valentines. Quit it with that shit. Your sister sure appreciated the Joe dog's meat. What was that? I said that I can go with or without February. That is most definitely not what he said. And once again, you cannot go with or without a month. We literally need to pass them, but I think Joe gave us the green light to place this in D tier. But yeah, after that we got March, and I don't really know what to say about this month. It's kind of a transitional one, and nothing really happens in the month of March. Come on, Barry, you love March because of March Madness. The whole world knows you love basketball. I mean, you were basically made to play that sport. What do you mean by that? You're six foot two, my man. Of course you can play some ball. Nothing more than that. Uh-huh, any comment to add about March, Joe? I love to pinch people who aren't wearing green. And I mean that I really, really love to pinch people who aren't wearing green during St. Patrick's Day. Odd, but you are Irish. I forget that at times. Yeah, this is going into C tier, quite honestly. Then following that week performance, I think we got another week entry, and that is April. Who the hell even cares about April? Uh, what the heck do you mean, who cares about April? It is only like the best day ever, and that's April Fools. I freaking love that month, and I especially love that day. God, he's so freaking Let's retarded. not say that word. We do not want to get demonetized, but yeah, you're right, Donald. Joe, you're a little, hmm, how can I say this in a way where we won't get demonetized? Joe, at times, you strike me as a person who is missing, or maybe has an additional chromosome. My syndrome might be down, but you all already know Joe Dog got his paper up. Jesus Christ, but yeah, I am placing this into C tier. I don't really care about what Joe has to say, and after that, we got May. And again, I hate to break it to any May lovers, but we've hit like boring months. I don't know what even goes on during the month of May. How freaking ignorant can you get Barack? The utter gal to believe nothing goes on in May when in all actuality it may be the most important month of the year because it is Arthritis Awareness Month during May. You cannot be serious right now, Joe. I am super serial. Yeah, just for that little comment, I'm putting this shit in C tier and will not care at all about Arthritis Awareness Month. But anyways, after that, we are gearing up towards better months and we got June and this is a pretty good month. Ah, because of Juneteenth, right? I am right there with you, brother. I need all my brothers from other mothers to stand up and rise for Juneteenth. Uh, no, I just meant that it was a good month because it gears us up towards summer. It has very little to do with Juneteenth, quite honestly. I personally like it because of Pride Month. I sure do love those parades because I see so many girls that wear no shirts and get this. They also wear no bras. Now the Joe dog can definitely get down with that and I am a huge supporter of the gays. Totally thought that was going in a different direction, but it somehow retained the same creepy tone I thought it was going to originally have. I hate to say it though, but Joe is spitting. Well, I, I would not say that is necessarily spitting, but whatever. I totally did think it was also going somewhere else, but anyways, I think I am rating June as a solid B tier. After that, we got July, and I don't think this one really needs any sort of debate, right? Like a solid S tier because it is the peak of summer and the best time to chill outside because you get the amazing sun and you can go out to the beach more often. Maybe get a sick tan or something. Well, we wouldn't want you to get a tan, Barack. You get any darker and I will have an even harder time finding you at night. I hate you so goddamn much. Ooh, what about me? Can I still get a tan, Donald? Joe, please tan as much as you can without wearing any sunscreen. You will be doing the world a favor with what will happen to you after. Don't see how me getting a dope ass tan makes the world better, but if you think I should do it, then who am I to deprive the world of some tanned Joe dog goodness? I know the Joe heads will go crazy for me in a Speedo. I did not want that mental image in my head, but unfortunately it is now ingrained deep inside my brain. Anyways, after summer we got August and this is a transition period, but it still kind of is a continuation of summer and is still hot as hell for the early month and sometimes even the middle of the month. Like I remember still going to the beach when it was August earlier this year and it was hot as hell. Well, given all the global warming and climate change that is happening out in the world and the polar ice caps melting at an alarming rate to the point where we cannot even harvest snow crabs because they have died in droves due to all that happening. I am not one bit surprised that you feel that way. It yeah, but it's dope as hell that it's hot in August, Joe. Quit being a loser. Yeah, Joe. If anything, that sounds like something you should fix and not me and Donald. But yeah, I'm also rating this an S tier. A bit too high for my liking, but whatever, I'll take it. Perfect. 
Now, let's move on to September. And I think this is where a little drop-off happens, and I don't really enjoy September all that much. It really starts to get cold, and sometimes it'll be warm, and it won't just know how to behave. I am thinking a solid B tier for it, but then we get saved because we got October up next, and who doesn't like a spooky month? You got a bunch of horror stuff going on, and quite honestly, as a big fan of horror, this whole month is great. Then we got Halloween, which is a great excuse for older people to dress up and go crazy with parties, and I feel like we all need that stress reliever. I know I need the stress relief when I see those nurse outfits. Joe, please relax right now. We do not need those comments right now. The one caveat I'll give to October is that handing out Halloween candy is annoying as hell. We need to abolish that, but otherwise, I am giving October an A tier. Might honestly have to start putting razor blades in the candy that I'm giving away to all those little shits. Okay. Did not need to go that far, but anyways, after we got November, and whilst I think this month mainly gets carried because it's the segue into December and Christmas, I still think it gets some respect because of Thanksgiving and the fact you can do Christmas shopping during the Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. So it's a good prep month and it has its own good things as well. I'm feeling yet another A tier for this. Heck yes. I love Thanksgiving and I think this is my favorite ranking of the list. Not too low, but also not too high. Ah, uh, thanks Joe. I'm not used to hearing that enthusiasm from you about something so normal. Well, wrapping up this whole list, we got December, and I think we all already know that this is going into S tier. Like, there is no way around it because we all love Christmas. And it has the countdown for the new year. And that's pretty cool. The only negative I can say about it is that with each passing December, it reminds you that you're constantly aging and leaving behind your precious youth. I'm not that bad yet, but Physical ailments and pains hit you more often, harder, and stay with you longer. Before, if I got hurt or got sick, it was just a matter of waiting a few days to heal. Nowadays, even with medical assistance. It's weeks and weeks of aches and pain before something heals. Cuts and scrapes are okay, but muscles, joints, and nerves take forever. It's hard to explain, but you slowly lose the illusion of invulnerability you had in your younger years then parts of you start hurting for no discernible reason. Doctors, stop trying to treat or diagnose you and just say, well, you're getting to that age. Losing touch with friends as they get girlfriends or get married, it gets harder and harder to just hang out. Another thing is that some people have the realization that every day your potential is shrinking. The more you live, the more you're locked into that life. One day you look at yourself and say, well, this is it. This is all I'll achieve and be in this life. You can either come to terms with it in a healthy way or let it depress you. But it's a very different feeling from the sheer potential you feel when young. Sure, when you were young, you knew on some level that your wildest dreams are a long shot, but they could happen. That hope dies bit by bit as you age. Yeah, cool story, bro, but at least high school girls stay the same age. Am I right or am I right, fellas? Disclaimer. The following video does not glorify the use of substances but instead attempts to be non-biased when delivering information disguised as entertainment through the form of satirical humor. All information contained on this video is for entertainment and informative use only and does not claim to be an authority. You should not construe the publication of this content as an endorsement by frail of the views expressed herein or any warranty or guarantee of any strategy, recommendation, treatment, action, or application of medication or preparation made by the author of the content. Viewer discretion is advised. What is up, gang? Your presidential trio is back, and this time around we are doing a, a well, a substances tier list. Just to frame that in a nice way, but we are ranking these based on what I have heard from others because uh, the Joe Dog may or may not have had all of these. Plus, remember that these things are bad for everyone, and we here do not condone it, but we did it because the comments have been begging for this to be made for like over two months. Oh, but you'll let Hunter do anything he wants whenever he wants. Yeah, he's such a little rascal, but let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got some Benadryl. Now I know what you're all thinking, Joe, this is not what we wanted. We want you to talk about LSD or something cool. Well, guess what? This is also a substance and I will review it before we get to our heavy hitters. Now I am a fan of Benadryl, which I am giving an S tier. This stuff is great for treating allergies, so if you're ever like camping out at someone's house and staying in the bushes waiting to jot down their everyday schedule, but happen to be laying in some poison ivy, well, don't you worry, 
because you will be covered with this stuff and you will not blow your cover when you're constantly itching yourself because the Benadryl will help treat that. I really don't like where that is headed. Can we talk about cough syrup, which is up next? I doubt even you can turn something as useful as that into something horrible. I don't know what you mean by that, but up next, we got some Delsum cough syrup and we might as well grade the Robo Tablets cough medicine, which of course comes in tablet form as well. I'm giving them both an A tier, but honestly, I might give the upper hand to the syrup because if that bad boy has any dextromethorphan, or as the streets say, DXM, or as their other street names, Black Beauties, Brownies, Dexies, Dextro, Drix, Gel, Groove, Mega Pearls, Poor Man's Ecstasy, Red Devils, Robo or Robo Tripping, Roho, Rome, Skittles or Skittling, Scissorp or Syrup Sky, Triple C, Tussin and Velvet. But uh, I don't know about any of that. Don't abuse over-the-counter medicine people. You're better off just drinking Everclear. Jesus Christ, Joe, don't tell them to do that either. I'm not telling them to do it. I am merely suggesting that it may be the healthier option if they were to choose between both. Only if they are of age, of course. We made a disclaimer, we're fine, Barack. Anyways, up next, we got Adderall, and old Joe can definitely tell you about this one since I was uh, prescribed this one, wink, wink. Joe, you don't audibly say wink, wink when doing stuff like that, Jesus Christ. Well, the Joe dog is not one to follow the rules, but yeah, this stuff is freaking amazing. This is a real life cheat code for those with ADHD and I swear I took some when I had to read up on King Henry VIII's wiki page, and I was beyond locked in. Like, you could not distract me even if you tried. It was like I had a case of the tism, and I saw a train pull into a station. I have to rate this thing an S tier. I don't like the way you're promoting these things. I am starting to think this tier list was a bad idea. Well, it's too late for that, isn't it, Barry? After that, we got another S tier, and that is a vape pen. As long as you're of age, then this is perfectly legal. And let me tell you that I want those metal monsters in my lungs from smoking. Like I have never been addicted to a vape, but I love getting that buzz from hitting it. Here's a little tip for all the people who think they'll get addicted. Just give them away or stop using them once you feel the urge of suddenly using it without any warning. Like if you're chilling on the couch and you think to yourself, man, I want to hit my vape. That's raps, buddy, because you done got addicted and you better stop. Joe, how are you not scared of getting addicted because I see you hit vapes and even use Zins? Oh yeah, I am a part of Zin Nation, but uh, if it were on this list, it would also be an S tier. But to answer your question, Donald, I always tell people that they shouldn't have a fear of me developing a nicotine addiction. They should fear my already very much so real masturbation addiction. I can't stop cranking it and people think I'm joking, but I am truly suffering. Joe, stop with the gross jokes and continue with the list. No one understands me. Oh. Well, I'll just live with that for the rest of my life. Anyways, after that, we got some magic mushrooms and shrooms going into S tier. Hypothetically, if you were to use these, make sure you crush them up and put them in a cup and squeeze a lime or two into it and mix it all together and then ingest it. It'll make the effects hit harder and pass by quicker. But uh, I would not know that because I only do legal things like alcohol, which is up next. And I absolutely hate that whoever made this used a freaking Everclear bottle, but yeah, this still goes into S tier. Remember once again that we are not saying you should do any of these substances. We are merely ranking them in an entertaining manner for you all. Joe really worried about our ad revenue with this video. The Joe dog fears the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, up next we got another S tier and that is marijuana and this stuff is an S tier as well. And can be as fun as drinking if you are partaking in legal states, of course. I mean, just look at how happy Cheech and Chong are because of it. After that, we got DMT going into B tier. And this stuff will make you live a lifetime within 30 minutes. And I personally have not done it, but I love hearing from people who have. Like if you are curious to hear it more in detail, check out Psyched Substance on YouTube. And he has a whole channel dedicated around trying out different substances and he does DMT on video. After that, we got what I assume to be is MDMA. At least I think it is. But yeah, this stuff is pretty cool at raves and you can see everyone's pupils widen and they just talk about how great life is and have their brains stocked filled with dopamine. And I think I have to give it an A tier. You know, despite you not taking a lot of these, I am still surprised that you have been around people who have taken this type of stuff. How are you surprised? I would be more surprised if he wasn't. Hunter probably tried every damn thing on this list and even more, who knows with that guy. Well, I won't deny that, but yeah, I have seen some stuff after that we got, as Martin would say. Cocaína. No. Flour. 
Somebody just asked me um, why I hate the military. And this stuff is pretty all right, but if you get a poor man's version of it, then you will be absolutely out of your mind and it'll ruin you. Cocaine and crack are the same, but at the same, you're getting a more shit version of it with crack. This has to get a C tier for me and it ruins your nose. After that, we got some, uh, I actually cannot think of what that is for the life of me, so I will place it into D tier. Someone in the comments, educate the masses on what this is, because remember, this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Shit, after that, we got some pink powder, and I don't know what that is either. I'll still give it a C tier because I like the color pink, and after that, I assume that's meth, and from the various meth head videos I've seen across multiple platforms, including the ones that start with an X, I can tell you that this stuff only looks cool because of Walter White, but this belongs in D tier. Then after that, we got some grass looking thing. Listen, guys, I don't know what these are. I am not qualified for this list, and frankly, I don't know why I am the one making it, but this goes in C tier, I guess. I won't even lie, Joe. Me and Barack talked it over and chose you specifically so you wouldn't do a good list in the near future. But uh, we also kind of assumed that you would know what these things are just because we thought you and Hunter probably did them together. No, not because I didn't want to, but because he wouldn't share. But yeah, I just need the comments section to clutch up for us and just tell us what the hell the things are. But thankfully, we won't need the comments for this next one because old Joe here is quite familiar with LSD's game and I have to also give this yet another A tier. I may or may not have tripped, I can neither confirm nor deny, but oh man, oh man. The Joe dog hypothetically thinks that this is cool for a one-time thing, but preferably never guys remember that. And wrapping up this whole list, we got literally have Viagra or like some sort of performance enhancing thing for when you're getting down and dirty. And let me tell you right now that this belongs in D tier. The Joe Dog never needs any help in that regard because I run on pure, raw, unfiltered Joe Energy. What the hell is Joe Energy? Oh, you'll know Joe Energy when you sense it deep inside of you building up until it eventually releases in one big bust. And now I wish I didn't ask that. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And to celebrate the wonderful holiday that is Christmas, we are going to be making a tier list based on different items that one would need for the holidays and that ranges from food all the way to movies. God, I'm freaking excited for this list. I don't know if you guys know this, but I really love Christmas. What? No way. It's not like you've made it super obvious on almost every single tier list that has ever mentioned this holiday. All right, Joe, you don't have to be mean about it, but anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first, we got snowmen. I'll keep it real with everyone here and say that I don't care at all about snowmen. Honestly, I'd say the same. Like, I have not made a snowman in forever, and I could care less about it. Why is it always snowmen? Why can't it be snow women instead? I don't know, and I quite frankly don't care, Joe. But anyways, I think we are all in agreement that these things don't matter. I will be placing snowmen at the very bottom of our tier list, because who quite honestly cares if you make them or not? The same cannot be said for our next entry, because I feel like gingerbread cookies are more important. Like me personally, I can go with or without them, but I know some people really care about these things. I would be one of those people because I need me some gingerbread cookies with milk. Does not surprise me one bit, but uh, I have to agree with Barack here because I could really care less if it's there or not. Well, that's a 2V one here. Donald and I think I will be placing it in the middle tier because me and Joe are quite indifferent towards it. Once again, these Christmas cookies should also be placed in the same middle tier. Like, I enjoy these things, but I am not handstand twerking on the wall for some Christmas cookies or gingerbread cookies. I think it's because I value the food and presents more than the treats themselves. Like, the same could be said about candy cane, but we're not there yet. This next item, though, I uh, don't know what it is. It looks like a potted tree, but I'm just going to substitute that for artificial trees. And quite honestly, I like them and would prefer they be there rather than nothing. I feel like trees of any type are important for the whole vibe and ambiance of Christmas. But obviously, I would prefer a real tree over anything else. Getting a real tree is such a hassle, though. Like, then you got all the pine needles going all over the floor, and I have to sweep constantly. And to be honest, I think I prefer the artificial trees over the real things. That's just because you're lazy, Joe. I would rather have some fresh, nice-smelling pine than some piece of plastic. I agree. Sure, we are probably hurting the environment, but, I mean, A, who cares? After that, we got The Grinch, and this movie is not needed for Christmas. And to be honest, I feel like most movies are not needed. Like, we'll have some in the background, but The Grinch isn't one where I'll lock in and pay attention to. 
I think I can go with or without it, quite honestly. Mariah Carey is a different story, though, because I will have her, and Frank Sinatra just on repeat. That and a little random songs, like Last Christmas, playing over and over just to help augment the vibe. And speaking of that, I have to have a real Christmas tree for Christmas. The smell of the pine just adds a multiplier for the overall Christmas feel in the house, and I think it is a must-have for the house. Amen to that brother, because I cannot imagine a Christmas without a real tree. I can and have had that type of Christmas for a couple of years now. I am telling you guys that the smell of pine and the hassle of getting a real tree is not worth the end product because it'll all result in the same thing, and that is the same ornaments going on the goddamn tree. See, that's how you feel, Joe. But me and Donald have seen the light and understand the importance of having the real deal in the house versus some plastic junk. Moving past that, we got Christmas pajamas, and I can go with or without this. Like I sometimes have the jammies on with the family, but we also dress up somewhat nice for our Christmas dinner and aren't super casual with it all. Or we just have some nice casual Christmas clothes, like some sweaters. Don't tell me you're the family who wears ugly Christmas sweaters the whole time. Well, not all the time, but sometimes it is funny to have those on. But we'll get to that when we reach them on the list, because up next we got Christmas ornaments, and I think this will be the first one I can go without. Like, they are okay if they're there, but the decorating with the tree and presents is enough, but these little shitty snow globes or small ornaments are just not worth it. i rather have stockings or something more flashy than just these little things. Plus, they break super easily, and if someone breaks it during a gathering, they just end up feeling bad and get all awkward, even though you tell them that it is honestly all okay and that you did not care that much about the ornament. Dude, I apologized last year already. Why do you keep bringing up my mistakes? See, that's the proof right there of that. But anyways, following all that, we got some fruitcake, and I can't really remember the last time we even had fruitcake at Christmas. I want to say that it is not really needed, but still would be kind of cool if it were there. But in all actuality, it quite frankly is not needed. The same cannot be said about Elf, because I like to have this and one other movie on this list just playing in the background while we unwrap presents. I wish I could relate to that, but after Hunter stopped visiting for the holidays, I don't really have a point in wrapping presents, or even buying some at this point. You know that's your fault entirely, Joe. I told you that if you just wrap up a kilo in some wrapping paper, then that'll be enough for Hunter. He literally gets that from me every year he visits. Wait, he visits you? Well, it's not like I want him there every year. I am tired of my spare room being used as the coke slash meth room. That's why I'm giving you pointers on how to get your son back. I don't get it. Why not just tell him he can't come during the holidays? The dude is my plug, and he knows the best party places in Miami. I cannot give that all up just because the man wants to go on an anti-Joe rant during the holidays and occasionally give substances to my other kids. Jesus, man. Well, at least it is in the spirit of giving, which is all that matters during the holidays. Following Elf, we now have Christmas Day turkey, and I never have turkey aside from Thanksgiving. So this already is cooked, because I could care less about some damn turkey on Christmas. Like, I don't associate turkey with Christmas at all, but if it's ham, that's a different story. Anyways, after that, we got the Charlie Brown Christmas special, and if you all guessed that I was talking about this movie as a must-have, then you'd all be incorrect. I can go with or without this movie, quite honestly, and the same can be said about our next item, because I am not a diehard for gingerbread houses. Like, they can be fun sometimes, so I give them a bit of respect, but if they're not there or I don't make any, it's not like I'm gonna fall to my knees and be mad at the world because I ruined Christmas. Gingerbread houses are just like edible Legos if you guys don't think about it. What the hell does that even mean? Is it because you construct both and make things out of them? I don't understand you a lot of the time, but one thing I do understand is Christmas ham. I would like to have ham every time during Christmas alongside whatever food we made that year. I don't really place a lot of stock into Christmas food because I feel like it's good to switch it up every year. But having ham is indeed a staple. Following that, we got eggnog, and this is a must-have. And I know there are a lot of eggnog haters out in the world, and I just want you to know that I do not care. I only buy this during the Christmas season, so please let me enjoy my goddamn drink one month out of the 12 in the year. Then we have Christmas sweaters and or ugly sweaters. Either way, I would like to have these when celebrating if we are not going to dress up. I like to be in a festive mood with the clothing if we're not going to dress nicely. Well, maybe with normal Christmas sweaters, but I'm not a fan of the whole wear the ugliest Christmas sweater type of stuff. 
They're all dumb. And a lot of the time, they're just overpaid trash. Someone got online because they want to be funny. Well, that's kind of the point of that, Donald. But anyways, moving on, we got hot chocolate. And real listeners know that we all love hot chocolate. So it is an immediate must-have with no questions asked. Candy canes, I can go with or without, though. Like, I've used them for decoration, but to actually eat and stuff. Well, they are not the best. Same with Polar Express, because I don't really care if it's playing or not, but that leaves two movies left. I wonder which one is going into the must-have category. You've got me all sorts of fucked up. If you think anyone in the audience will believe that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer has any chance of being a must-play movie during Christmas, just get going with the list and put Home Alone up there, because we all know that's the movie. Damn, Joe. I did not know you hated Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer so much. But first, let me rate sledding, and it is most definitely not really needed. It's more like a winter event, and even then, why go sledding when you can snowboard? But now that we're on Home Alone, I regret to inform the audience that Joe was indeed correct, because this is a must-have during the holidays. It doesn't even feel good saying out loud anymore, because you ruined it, Joe. You just sucked out all of my Christmas joy, so let's just get this list over with. And after that, we got presents, and of course, that's a must-have. You cannot have Christmas without any sort of presents because they're just a part of the holiday, like it is so integral towards it. And who doesn't like the joy of giving a really good present away to someone? As for the movie, well, I do not really care and could go with or without Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Then wrapping up this beautiful list, we got Christmas carolers, and quite honestly, they are not really needed. Like, I don't mind them, but it can get a bit annoying having strangers sing to you at your door. That's why I have a sign in the front of my house that says carolers will be shot on sight and have a laser pointer going out my front door. See me personally, I love to hear the little kids serenading their beautiful saint-like voices to me. All right, that's enough of you, Joe. And to our whole audience, we all wish you a happy holiday. Merry Christmas to you all. And may you all have a very nice and jolly Merry Jomas. A what? What is up, gang? We are back with another video and go figures, Donald and Barack give me the freaking bug tier list. They're just lucky that I get caught watching those super long video documentaries where they do like the daily lives of insects and you follow around one of those dudes for like a 40 minute series. I won't lie though, because those videos bang and not to mention I'm a huge fan of those terrarium videos on YouTube. I can watch a dude assemble a terrarium and choose what insects and animals will inhabit that place. I watch those for a long bit too. I have them in queue constantly and use them as background noise, huh? I was originally going to complain about you guys giving me this list, but uh, I am starting to actually see why I was given this list. Yeah, I hate to break it to you, Joe, but me and Barack suspect you have a case of the tism. Much to nobody's surprise, though. That, and you have been playing a lot of Grounded recently, Joe. You're basically a bug expert when compared to me or Donald. Well, I wouldn't say he's more of an expert than me, but I had to throw him a bone occasionally, and he got this video. Well, you know what? I will make this one of the best videos on insect rankings to ever exist that was made in the year 2023 during the month of December. Extremely specific parameters, but you know what? It may be an actual factual statement. I know. I have never lied in my whole life. If I did, may Hunter stop snorting coke lines off some random escort's belly. And we all know that ain't stopping anytime soon. So let's just instead get started with this tier list. And up first, we have a very simple bug, and that is the ant. What can I say about these guys? They are cool and can lift up to 10 times their own weight. That's pretty cool, but me personally, I don't think they are the best. I think that ants belong in B tier just because there are most certainly cooler insects on the list, and I want to have this from my personal perspective. Like most of the time I see ants, I am not in a good mood because they are in my house just eating and messing up my things. Well, maybe you should start closing your various food items and spraying insecticide around your home because that is a very solvable issue. The Joe Dog refuses to admit defeat in the face of insects. Following that, we got our first S tier in this list and much to nobody's surprise, it is the humble and mighty bumblebee. These little dudes are harmless and produce honey, which if you all don't know is very delicious and I have got to have honey on my pancakes or French toast. I am a syrup man as well, but man, oh man, all natural honey has a special place in my heart. And these little dudes do that and pollinate the plants. All around bees are just the best. That's a pretty good rating for these guys. This is actually a base take from you, Joe. I will not lie. All the Joe heads believe that my takes are based. That's just how the Joe dog rolls. But anyways, following the great bee, we have a beetle, but more specifically, the black ox beetle. How do I know this, you ask? I am just a master at knowing what bugs are what. 
Shut the hell up, Joe. He literally only knows what it's called because he played grounded. But either way, watch that be wrong. Okay, you caught me, but I swear that's the right Beatle. But let's get to the rating. And I firmly believe that these guys are pretty cool. You can make them fight, and they are just all around swell guys. I think I am giving them an A tier for no other reason other than them looking cool and fighting in a cool way. After that, though, we got another S tier, and that is the butterfly. Who doesn't like butterflies? Like, you have to be on some big hater shit to be able to hate butterflies. I remember getting that little kit to grow your own butterflies and then releasing them once they were fully grown. Don't you mean you got caterpillars and then they turned into butterflies? You can't just get butterflies. You have to get caterpillars first and have them cocoon into a butterfly. Way to get on my ass for something as simple as that. Barack, but sure, yeah, I meant to say caterpillars, but either way, those are next on the list, and they frankly are not as cool as butterflies. I would rather just have their final form, but seeing them crawl and squirm is pretty cool, so I'd have to give them an A tier for their potential coolness. It's like that one episode of SpongeBob where they get a pet caterpillar, and they thought he was cool as hell. After that, we got our first D tier, though, and that is the goddamn cicada. I would firebomb an entire colony of these things because I swear to God they make so much noise when you're so close to sleeping and it takes a lot to bother me from my sleep. I remember Donald brought me to a nightclub and while they were playing hardcore EDM, my ass was simply napping in the corner. That's how you can tell cicadas are the real problem if they stop me from sleeping, but EDM won't. Then that shows how annoying they are. Uh, Joe, I don't think you realized you were roofied at that nightclub. Uh, what? Yeah, you took a drink from this one guy who was eyeing you down, and even though I told you not to, you said, and I quote, the Joester never turns down a free drink, and next thing you know, you were knocked out cold in the corner of our table. I would have helped you, but I was too busy dancing, and I could not leave this hot chick I was with just because you were getting dragged away by that guy to the bathroom. Huh, well, that would explain why my butt was so sore, but whatever. I still hate cicadas, and that is the moral of the story. Are we sure that's really the moral of the story? Okay, new moral of the story, fuck cicadas and never take drinks from strangers. After that, we got another goddamn D tier, and those are cockroaches. I don't even need to explain this one at all. We all know how much everyone hates them and how gross they are. After that, we got dragonflies, and these dudes are dope, like they are really cool to look at, but you can't really interact with them and they just buzz around. I think I am feeling a solid B tier for them because they're not really all that. What the hell do dragonflies even do? Like, what is their purpose in the environment? I honestly don't know, but oh God, after that, we have the absolute worst bug in all of existence. If there were a tier below D, then I would put the fly there because these things just ruin everything. Like, I hate when they just land on any food you have out and then you don't want to be gross and eat it because you already imagine the fly landed on some poop or something outside. So now if you take a bite out of your food, you're sitting there with the thought of yourself ingesting shit particles. And the absolute worst is when you're outside minding your own business and a fly keeps landing on you and harassing you like you're a 14 year old girl in front of R. Kelly. I hate that because then people will think I didn't shower. But uh, Joe, you don't shower a lot of the time. Yeah, but I don't want people to know that. Well, anyways, after that we got a... Uh, I think these are grasshoppers, and I really have no opinion on these. I think they jump around a lot and are a solid C tier. Ooh, but the ladybug is an amazing bug. I have these dudes going into S tier. Like, who doesn't like these little guys just crawling and flying about? I know that I like to hold them sometimes, and they just chill on my palm for a bit. After that, we got the praying mantis, and these things can be kind of cool, especially with how they can kill so many things. But that also in turn scares me. Like I know that me personally, I am not scared of them. But what if someone who happens to be scared of them encounters a praying mantis because these things can kill birds, bro? I think this is a B tier still. Joe, how big do you think these things are? I don't know, but they look huge. Joe, you freaking idiot. They like not bigger than three to five inches, which is actually, uh, never mind. that is freaking big. I might even dare to say that they are huge, especially if the right set of hands are next to them. Actually, three to five is pretty small or barely cracking the average. I think you cured my fear of these little dudes. Following that, we got mosquitoes. And you all already know that these malaria-giving pieces of garbage are going to D-tier. And if anyone likes mosquitoes in the comments, I want you to know you're a dim-witted lack of space singular cell organism with no bitches. Okay, you adding on that last part was not necessary at all. 
make it make sense then, Barack. After that trash bug, we got something that isn't as bad, but I don't see any good in a moth. They are like evil butterflies, but not really. They're just like the ugly ass version of butterflies and they'll go in C tier for me. Following that though, we got a solid A tier in snails. I love these dudes and just messing with them. I'll grab one and move him like 10 feet back from where he came from and just do that over and over until I get bored. It brings me much joy to see them stuck in perpetuity. Bro got the snail on the same path as Sisyphus. Only until I get bored though, because I do have some compassion. After that, we got another C tier and that is the spider. Now don't get me wrong, I do mess with spiders and understand they help protect gardens from other bugs and that tarantulas are cool. I just am a little scared of them. Like whenever I get bit by a random spider, I suddenly think I am going to die of super hyper mega death aids, and I would rather not die of that. Joe, do you realize how stupid that sounds? Most spiders aren't even deadly to humans. That's what they want you to think before they make their strike. But anyways, let's go with the next set of bugs, and up next we got a stick bug, and I have nothing to say then. Uh, they look cool and should go in B tier. Now the next one is a wasp, and I have a deep hatred for wasps. They automatically go in D tier, and are the worst of the worst. They are super territorial too, and their stings hurt like hell. I love watching wasp extermination videos where they just go in there and either poison or destroy their homes, and they can't do anything but watch. The wasp hate is valid, so I am not even gonna hold those comments over you. I personally enjoy the ones where random idiots try to take down a nest. Like, did you guys see that one video where the dude eats a wasp nest? No, I have not, uh, Frail, play the video for me and the audience. You wanted him, bitch? Is that who you really wanted? You sure about that? There he is, bitch. There he is. There. Jesus, that was terrifying. But I oddly enough have respect for that guy. Well, rounding off the list, we got worms, and these dudes are cool. I give them an A tier. They remind me a lot of my uncircumcised penis. All right, penis. that's a wrap. What is up, gang? We are back with another tier list. And this time around, we got a time of the day tier list. And with this list, I'll just be going over how a person generally feels during that time of day, because we all know how we'd feel if someone was like, you gotta wake up at 5 a.m. versus a, can you be up before 8 a.m.? Are you implying that waking up at 5 a.m. is a bad thing? Because the Joe dog never finds a bad time to wake up. I have the insane power to be able to fall asleep at a moment's notice. I didn't know we were calling dementia a power up, but I guess that's what we do now in the year of 2024. All right, no need to say mean things. We have a wonderful list right in front of us and our audience gets to enjoy another banger of a video. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this list started. And up first we got 12 a.m. and I don't know about you all, but 12 a.m. is kind of whatever for me. I'm feeling a B tier because like it's that indecisive time where you have to draw the line and be like, okay, am I going to stay up or finally go to sleep? And I don't like making that decision. Yeah, figures that the decision to bomb multiple countries and incinerate multiple children in the Middle East is an easier decision for you. Thank deciding whether or not to sleep in. Okay, ouch, dude, but you know damn well what I meant. I think what Donald is saying is that you are being silly, Barry. That is in no way at all what I mean by that disparaging comment. Yeah, thanks for the useless comment as always, Joe. You're as helpful as a broken condom. Anytime, Bomberman. Ha! All right, that's enough. Let's move on to the next entry, and that is 1 a.m. Now, I am placing this into A tier because if you stay up till 1, then you probably are past the dreadful hour of 12 and have likely decided to stay up. Plus, if you're doing anything socially, then you know this is like the best hour to have fun, like other times are too early or barely getting there, but one is like the perfect time because it's not as late as 2 a.m. or 3 a.m., which with the way I talk about it, you guys can already tell that those two are lower than one and you'd be correct. I then have 2 a.m. going into B tier because it's approaching the lousy time of 3 a.m. and it's starting to get damn late. Then I have 3 a.m. going into C tier because most times out of 10, you are not having a good time at 3 a.m. except for the occasional party, but let's all be honest here. You're either doom scrolling Twitter, just dreading to go to sleep because you either have stuff to do or you have to wake up early. I know that because the same things happen to me, 
I'll go down a YouTube rabbit hole and watch 50-minute video essays on movies I haven't watched or games I haven't played, all to avoid the fact that I have to wake up at 7 a.m. See me personally, I can never relate to that. The Joe Dog adheres to a strict bedtime, and if I don't meet it, then I will be all out of whack and will not be as articulate as I know I should be. You're telling me that the current you is the articulate and smarter version? Jesus, I can't even imagine a more dumber version of you. I actually agree wholeheartedly with you on this. But, yeah, moving on from that, if you guys thought I hated 3 a.m., then welcome to 4 a.m., because I have this going even lower than 3, and I'm putting it into D tier. This is like the worst time, because if you're a night owl, then this is the time you realize that you have to go to sleep, or at least start getting ready for it. Because if you don't, you're gonna mess up your sleeping schedule because you know you won't fall asleep later if you don't do it now. Plus, like, nothing cool happens at 4 a.m. Like, normal people are dead tired by this time and will be red screen like in Call of Duty unless they get to their bed. I won't lie, if I am up at that time because of a social event, my ass is like one tap and on some low ass HP. Like, I need a revive or something because 4 a.m. is quite a devious time to stay up till. Like, I know my breakfast is gonna be missed unless I choose to tank the damage and just use an energy drink. 100% agreeing with you there, Donald. Then I got 5 a.m. going into C tier because this would be an okay time to wake up at. I'm not saying it's the best, but if you're healthy and stuff, then a nice 5 a.m. jog could get the blood going to start your morning. If you haven't slept and it's still 5 a.m., then this is like the ultimate last chance to not wake up at 1 p.m. the next day. As for 6 a.m., I am placing this above and slotting it into B tier. A lot of people wake up at 6 a.m., especially for those office days to make the commute. And a lot of people in school do the same as well, and I have to say that it is not the worst. I actually don't mind it at all, but I still would prefer to wake up earlier, like at 7 a.m., which I then have going into A tier. 7 a.m. is sneakily a really good time. Like, I feel like that's a very normal time to wake up if you properly sleep. I would know because I wake up at that nice time. Well, with all the naps you take, I am not in one bit surprised you have no problems with waking up at 7 a.m. I don't know if naps necessarily help with that, because it's not like sleeping stacks onto how rested you are after you enter your sleeping cycle, but whatever. Following that, we got the golden hours of waking up, and that is 8 a.m. all the way through 11 a.m., which I have all going straight into S tier, because if you think about it, I would not be upset waking up at any of these times, and they are the perfect hour for breakfast. And if you want a slightly early lunch, then you can do that too. Like, the day just feels fully started at this time, and usually the sun is fully out. And there are people doing their normal, everyday things in life, and it doesn't feel as solitary. I pray to God that people are out doing their normal, everyday tasks at those times. Like Jesus, imagine if everyone was sleeping during that time. Well, those are slots for my famous Joe Dog nap time hour. A nap at 11 a.m. when you really need it, man, that hits the spot. Joe, I don't think anyone is taking a lot of naps at those times. Unless you had something to do and you woke up early as hell and then took a nap, but I personally am not a fan of that. Anyways, after that 12 p.m., and that is a straight A tier for me. This is usually lunchtime and I look forward to having that in my schedule, but then once you hit 1 p.m. or 2 p.m., you start to realize time slows down and you just can't wait for the end of school or work. So you hyper-focus on that until you eventually can go. All of that leads me to place these two into B tier. Time only slows down if you're not having fun. Now tell me, Barry, are you not having fun during those two hours? No, not really, but I don't like talking about it. But uh, up next, we got 3 and 4 p.m. going straight into A tier. These are the hours you salivate for as you're almost done or are already done with what you need to do in your day. And instead, you focus on what you're going to do after, which leads directly into our free time the golden hours, if you may. So what you're saying is that these two hours are basically the pregame for the ones after. That's exactly what I am saying, because in my humble and honest opinion, I have 5 through 7 p.m. all going into S tier because those are peak times when you're out and about doing stuff or just chilling at home. You arguably get the most bang for your buck during this time because it's all free time. And there's no worry about going to sleep yet. So you're just fully immersed in whatever you're doing, and most times, especially in the summer, the sun does not go down. So you're enjoying the time before it gets dark and you eventually get reminded that you have to go to sleep. This all just seems like you have some sort of bias against sleeping. Like every single time you talk about a negative, you seem to always mention the fact that you need to sleep. Now, what is wrong with sleeping? Because I personally really love sleeping. Of course you do, Joe. But no, the problem does not lie with sleeping. 
trust me. But it's just that when you got to think about the next day and what's to come, you can't help but let it bother you. Like you ever have a fun time out with your buds and you're drinking or just relaxing in general and then you look at your phone and realize, oh shit, I got to go to bed soon. That whole experience is just a bad one and you know that too, Joe. Don't try to act all high and mighty and try to make me seem like I'm the only one who feels this way. Donald, you have to agree with me, right? Well, uh, I can see both ways, but not for the same pussy reason as Joe here. I do admit that opening up your phone late and realizing that you have to wake up or be home in X amount of hours may suck. But a realm motherfucker like me just gets an energy drink and deals with it the next day, as I mentioned earlier. I can go out clubbing one night and be feeding the dogs at 7 a.m. the next morning. Anything is possible with a lot of caffeine. The only drawback is that'll all feel like Lizzo's toilet after she takes some laxatives. Okay, I guess it is possible, but most times out of 10, you feel like absolute dog water when doing that. But fine, I guess that is a valid point. I still have those staying in S tier, but I will at least acknowledge that 8 p.m. through 10 p.m. are still solid A tiers. Like my reasoning is still valid as hell. And if you think about it, these are the final bits of free time before you realize you gotta come back home from wherever you're at or start getting ready for bed if you have something to do early as hell. I don't think those are bad ratings at all, but maybe I'd consider lowering 10 p.m. a tad, but I feel like that's a very normal time to go to sleep. 10 p.m. is a golden hour to slumber because if you do it too early, people will call you a grandpa. And if you do it too late, you'll have people saying you're gonna die soon if you keep up your erratic and bad sleeping schedule. Joe, I don't think people say that to everyone. I think whoever said that meant it specifically for you. Yeah, Joe, it's probably because you're to 100 than you are to 50. So uh, people are quite concerned with your health, not to mention you're actually the president of this damn country. Oh, well, would you look at that? Anyways, what do you guys think was happening in those tunnels in New York? That shit looks pretty rad. They're blaming the Jews, but me personally, I think it was mole people. Please don't change the topic to something trendy, but I would rather not delve into that conspiracy. Anyways, wrapping up this list, we got 11 p.m., and I have this going into C tier. This is the final hour of judgment, and I just feel like a lot doesn't happen at 11 p.m. And you feel lousy as hell when you see the day switch from being Sunday 11.59 p.m. to Monday 12 a.m. Like you think to yourself, damn, it's the next day already, and that is only cool when it's New Year's Eve, but aside from that, you're just like, ah, shit, here we go again. Okay, nice list, but seriously, what is going on in those tunnels? I kind of want to go down that rabbi hole as well. Uh, get it, guys? Because instead of rabbit hole, I said rabbi hole, and there were Jewish people in the tunnel. Just for that, I'm ending the video.